Hello, everyone. I am so sorry that I'm running a few minutes late. We ran over on cut to hook conversations. Hello, hello. How is everyone? Who do I have? Hello, Grandma Anna. So she says, hi, hon. So let me tell you, Anna. Um, and hello, Miss Roseanne. Roseanne Alexander says, hi. I have to tell both you ladies. Um, I think you were there. I know you were, Roseanne. So you know you need to. Hey, Jen. Send me your address. So, Roseanne, I can mail you your CD. Jen says, again? I'm just telling them they're winners. <laughs> and then, um, Grandma Anna, I have a Joy bookmark to mail you, if you will. Send me an address. And let's see, Jen says, hi. Jen says, again, Roseanne says, okay. Jen says, I sent you my email, cool beans. And Grandma Anna says, congrats, Roseanne, or grats, Roseanne. And Grandma Anna says, whoop, thank you. You're welcome. So um, just a quick comment about the blanket. I know for sure, Jen, you were there at that time. Um, Roseanne, I don't know if you were on. And Anna, I, Grandma Anna, I don't know if you were on at that time when we talked about it too. But um, Roseanne, Grandma Anna says, hi, Roseanne and Jen. Roseanne says, thank you, Grandma Anna. And Jen says, hi, everyone. So our blanket for Monday, we're adding 13 rows and Four of them are just simple, easy peasy. You can do in your sleep. You know, you'll be fine. Nine rows. We're going to create a pattern and I'm not showing it to you. Not now and not in the beginning of the video because I want you to work it as a process and be surprised what it turns into. But it is going to be time consuming and it is the longest tutorial video I've ever put out. But I really took my time working the stitches with you. So once you get it, fast forward. But I know that everyone is at different stages of their crocheting. So I wanted to make sure that everyone was successful and having a great time. So good luck on Monday. Have fun next week working on your blanket. And if you get behind, don't let it discourage you. Because um, the next week is very easy peasy. That's all I'm going to say. So, did everyone have a great week? Did we all get to watch our episodes six and seven? And Grandma Anna says, okay. And she says, thank you, Cynthia. You are very welcome. She says that she did. While we're talking, I'm going to be crocheting and working on my pocket shawl. So I can definitely make sure that tutorial goes out Wednesday. I'm so excited. And then I'm going to eat my dinner if that's okay. So we're having just a throw together Friday night dinner of tater tots and kibasi sausage. <laughs> hey, it's quick, easy, and simple. The hubby has to go to bed in just a hot minute because they are making him go in and work on his day off. How dare they? But then... He and I have a date night tomorrow, so. All right. Let's see. Everyone's saying, Jen says, yes, she got to watch her episodes. Roseanne says, yes, a busy week. Yes, I just finished watching them. Roseanne, I'm not going to lie to you. Normally, I do it pretty much right after we have our nights. And I did it this afternoon. <laughs> So I'm right there with you. Um, Grandma Anna says, sounds yummy. 
wish I could share. Um, Roseanne says, whoop, whoop. And Grandma Anna says, me too, Roseanne. Good. We're all in there together. So, and Roseanne says, laugh out loud. Yeah, I was so afraid I was going to be like, um, y'all might have to ask me questions <laughs> that I won't be able to answer. But got it done. All right. So episode six. Um, let me ask you this. Just throwing, just throwing questions out just to shake it up a little bit so it's not like the same thing always every week, although it works. But which episode did you like better? Did you like six or did you like seven better? I mean, technically they're all good, but I actually had a favorite episode. Grandma Anna says she likes six the best. Anybody else? Anybody else? Have? Roseanne says six. Jen says, hubby said six. <laughs> um, mine was seven. And I'll tell you why. I feel like, uh, what's his name? Dr. Ken off of the Mass Singer. And I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> I don't know if y'all watch that or not, but. Because this guy from Vic's past shows up. <laughs> Grandma Anna's laughing. Um, he shows up. And it's like, whoa. So I felt like we're fixing to find out something. Like something big is about to happen. So that's why I like seven. But as always, they're really great episodes. Like this guy did a great job. I've not made it to Whitmire yet to look for books. But it's so funny. The security guard at the hospital... He has seen me sometimes um, working on my blanket, you know, like when I can do segments where we just do a work along, you know, and then I come back, I'll take that and work on it. And he's seen it. Plus he watches my channel and um, he said to me, did you know they actually have books on Longmire? I was like, yes, <laughs> I think I've turned into a Longmire geek. I said, I just found out. I said, I Googled it. And I was shocked. So I asked our library and they said, no, they didn't. But the other library in our county does and they can send them over. And I told them not to worry about it, that I would just go look for myself. But I may have to do that because it might be quicker in the end if they did it. I thought it'd be if I did. But anyway, so let's see. Um, oh, <laughs> Jen says that's why they didn't like episode seven was because this guy came back from her past. So time will tell what that's all about. Um, he gave me the creeps though. Not going to lie. Like he creeped me out and her body language around him. Ooh, we're fixing to find out something good. Something, something. It's going to be exciting. All right. Grandma Anna says, thanks. What I didn't like his reaction to Vic, right? That's what, that's what I mean. He was so creepy. Oh my gosh. There's something there. Mm. And uh, just talking about her, um, how about, uh, was it episode six or seven? Let me think a minute. It was six. That woman says something about, and because uh, they were having the election and, uh, or the debate, not the election, the debate. And she says, and that rude blonde cop pulled me over. I was like, whoop. <laughs> she just speaks her mind. She just calls it like she sees it. She's straightforward. She don't beat around the bush. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, Grandma Anna says, please like video. Oh, yes, y'all. I appreciate thumbs up if y'all will do that. So, 
I have one thumbs up right now on it. So I appreciate if y'all will give me a thumbs up. All right. Um, thank you for that, Grandma Anna. Jen says more interaction between Branch and Walt on six. And that is very true. That is very true. And I have an opinion about something that just really kind of got me excited, but I'm going to wait till we get to those questions on that scene. Um, but it's about Walt and Branch and this whole debate thing. Roseanne says, yes, Jen. Grandma Anna says, and Walt in those khakis. I know, right? Oh my gosh. You look good. You look good. Um, I'm glad that Katie and Ruby went and dug them out though, because he really needed to wear those to the debate. Good choice. They're definitely looking after him. Um, Grandma Anna says, laugh out loud. And Jen says, Grandma Anna, girl. <laughs> hey, he looked good in them khakis. All right. Jen says, yes, for an older man. Yes, he does for an older man. I don't know. Y'all may be younger than me, so. Uh, but can't help having two good looking men running for sheriff. I mean, right? So. I'm sure uh, that lady in episode seven didn't mind him, Branch, looking after her, watching her friend's condo. Um, Jen says, yes, for an older man. Grandma Anna says, older women. Okay, okay. Grandma Anna says, I'm 58. Roseanne Alexander says, me too. Okay, well, I'm 51, so we're right there together. And um, Jen, are you the baby in our group? Grandma Anna says the show has three handsome men, Walt, Branch, and Henry. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You are very correct, and I stand corrected. <laughs> yeah, when uh, Henry smiles, that dimple shows, whew, and them eyes, the heart's a-fluttering. He trusts me. Jen says, don't read. Um, okay. <laughs> Do you really not want me to say that out loud? Of course, if Miss Sylvia was on here, she'd let me know she was on here. I read my quote, my, my, my things for her. Um, but <laughs> Grandma Anna says, nothing wrong with that. So... She says, my hubby's listening. <laughs> hey, hubby. Hey, Mr. Reeves. All right. And you know what, Grandma Anna? I agree. Ferg is adorable. He really is. And he has a big heart. He will make a great man for somebody. He, he reminds me of, of my husband. Very, very kind, loving heart. Roseanne says, yes. Grandma Anna says, yep. So, and to me, there's nothing more attractive on a man than, than a good heart. So, anyway. All right. So, episode six. So, what was your first thought when Walt is, exactly, Grandma Anna, and that's what she said, exactly. So, what was your first thought when Walt's driving down the road and this man rides by on a horse with this freaky crazy mask on. I was like, what? <laughs> what is that all about? I know. What the heck, says Grandma Anna. I was like, okay. We got some crazy stuff going on, on tonight. <laughs> Jen says he's dreaming. <laughs> yeah. And um, I didn't, I didn't, um, I mean, my first thought was, you know, I, at first, when I first saw it, I honestly thought he was at first on the horse backwards and like he was a victim to something. But then it showed another shot when Walt stopped and got out of the, the truck and, and good Rosanna. Okay. Roseanne says me too. And so I thought, oh my gosh, we got some freaky stuff going on here. But then it was him. And then I was like, mm, he's done gone and done something that he should not have done. 
<laughs> so anyway, so it's amazing how, how he's facing on a horse can change the whole scenario. <laughs> but all right. So at that time, okay, because we know how it ends. But at that time, do you think Walt knew who that man was? Roseanne says yes. Grandma Anna and Jen say yes. I do too. He knew who he was talking to. The mask wasn't a disguise because he recognized his voice. He recognized, you know, his body features. So yes, he did. And that's why he knew exactly who to go to when he found Cassandra, you know, no longer with us. All right. <laughs> When Henry and Walt go, <coughs> excuse me, to Aaron, that's the guy that was on the horse. That's Cassandra's brother. Cassandra's now our dead victim. What did Aaron accuse Henry of? He actually described him as something. Do you remember what that was? Yes, Grandma Anna. He he had issues with him before. Yes. And Grandma Anna, you're right. She says a fraud. He was calling him out about his Indian heritage. And he specifically said, you may be red on the inside, but you're white on the outside. And then he resembled him or referenced him to a piece of fruit. What was that fruit? Todd. Yes. <laughs> and you're right, Roseanne, specifically, a shiny apple. But yes, Jen and Grandma Anna, an apple. Y'all, excuse me a minute. This poor man. Todd. He may have his headphones on. I was. If not, I can go. I was going. I need ketchup. You need me to go grab it real quick? Yeah. Thank you. Love that man, y'all. He's so good to me. Um, between tonight's videos, it's like I work him to death. I promise you I love that man. It's been a crazy week here, so he's really helping me pull this together. Um. What did Vic say about Cassandra's place of records? So, so, so let me let me bring us into the scene. So we have Vic and we have Walt, and they're at the place of records. Thank you. And um, Vic specifically says something about it because it looks like she's a hoarder. But ah, oh, thank you, Grandma Anna. Baby, Grandma Anna says she's happy to see a great marriage. And Jen says, me too. So, I promise you he's the better half. Like, I, I am truly blessed. He jokes and tells me that he's awesome, but he really is. I mean, he, he really supports me on my channel here and what I do at the hospital. So I'm, I'm blessed for that. Um, hey, Deborah, welcome, welcome. We really are just getting started. We talked about the Longmire blanket in the beginning, so you didn't miss a whole lot other than just be prepared. We're adding 13 rows and it's going to be a time consuming section. And it's a long tutorial, but you can fast forward when you get it. I just take a lot of time really demonstrating things. But it's okay if you get behind this week because next week um, I've already done it and there's nothing to it. So the fact we did 13 weeks, I mean 13 rows this coming week, it's very few rows the next week. So you'll be great. So that's all you've really missed. We're really just getting into the, the beginning. So you're, you're good. 
And we started late because we got off the other video late. So, all right. And, uh, and if you will, I'd love it if you give me a thumbs up on my video. Roseanne says, repeat the question. I will. Jen says, hi, Deborah. Roseanne says, hi. I can't tell what that is. F-R-N. Deb. Oh, Deb. Okay, she says Deb. All right. The question was, we have Vic and Walt, and they've gone to Cassandra's place of records, like the building that she's keeping all these records in um, from her clients. And we've come to realize she's kind of like a hoarder. And Vic says something specifically about this place of records. She says there's a lot of what? Um, Deborah says, okay, sounds like fun. Hi, everyone. Um, it is. And real quick on that, Deborah, I do not show y'all what the, it looks like at first because I want you to go through the process of it to let it appear and show you what it becomes. And also not only for the element of surprise, but I don't want you to look at it and get overwhelmed. It's not hard. It's just time consuming. So have fun. Um, Grandma Anna says, paneling loose. Jen says, things of others. Okay. So yes, that is all correct. But what Vic specifically says is there's a lot of secrets here. And then Walt comes back. And he says, and there's also a lot of what? <laughs> Jen says, I didn't take notes. Deborah says, laugh out loud, too, laugh out loud, too overwhelmed. Roseanne says, me either. <laughs> I got y'all. We all did good. Deborah, we all did good to get this watch this week. And if that ever happens, ladies, we can either just come and hang out and talk and crochet and catch up the next week. So, because life happens. Um, Grandma Anna says pain. Oh, um, I hope you're feeling better. Even if the body's still hurting, I hope we're helping your heart bringing you some laughter. Um, so Walt says, Vic says there's a lot of secrets. Walt says there's a lot of suspects. <laughs> um, question number seven. What do you think about... Oh, that's so sweet, Grandma Anna. Uh, well, hang on. Let me back up. Oh, I got Deborah says pain in the room and grandma Anna says, thank you. My daughter's going to put a pain patch on my back. God bless your daughter. I'll tell you what, there's nothing like being to have someone to kind of help you when there's tough days. So my ride or die is, is definitely Todd or some of y'all calling Mr. Joyful and grandma Anna. It's, it's great to have your daughter and her love for you to do that. Yes. Grandma Anna says, yep. All right. So question number seven, what do you think about Jacob helping branches campaign? Remember Jacob is kind of head of the tribal council. So what did y'all, what, what, did, what was y'all's take on that? That he is pretty much the one paying for branches campaign. Were you surprised? I was surprised. He was like the last person, but then I wasn't because, you know, Walt doesn't have like this, you know, lovey-dovey, wonderful, beautiful 
smell the flowers kind of, you know, relationship with the res. So it doesn't surprise me that somebody with authority on the res is helping Branch run against Walt. But I thought it was sneaky too. And Grandma Anna says, it's dirty that he passed questions to Branch. Yes. And Roseanne says it was sneaky. Jen says, I knew that. That's why Branch won't win, I think. Yeah. So I was just kind of like, mm-hmm. But you know, truth has a way of coming to light. So, yeah. I think I'm foreshadowing who I think is going to win that election. All right. Question number eight. What cards did Branch say he has read? I'm trying to reel back in what this theme was that I wrote that question. I know what I know. Oh, this is um this is still where he and Vic, I think, are still in the evidence room or the the building where Cassandra had all of her records. Because remember, Vic called Branch to come over there. He thought Walt was sending him over there. And Vic says, no, I called you. This is overwhelming. And then that's when they found the the loose panel. And then they found the the board with all the, you know, supposed burial sites and stuff on it. And yes. Uh, well, Jen said, Grandma Anna says poker, and Jen says repeat, and Grandma Anna says poker cards. So the question was, um, what cards did Branch say he has read? And it's the ones at the poker table. All right. So they also found a ledger, and they turned all this stuff over to Walt. Walt brings Jacob in and he's questioning him about being in the ledger. Hello, stills the show crochet and chef. She says, hello, ladies. Welcome. Glad you could join us. Um, so he asked Jacob, how much were you paying Cassandra? And so I know you guys didn't take notes. Uh, still the show, Crochet and Chefs. I need to grab my notebook so I know what your first name is. It's bad on my part. Sorry. Um, she says, I'm good. Smiley face emojis with hearts. Roseanne says, hi. And she says, hi, Jen. Grandma Anna says, sorry, I couldn't make today's live V. Yes, thank you. Grandma Anna helping this clogged brain and um Roseanne says yes and Sylvia says good evening everybody well you're the one who wanted to be the crawl dad sing where the real crawl dad what wait a minute good evening everybody well you're the one who wanted to be the crawl dad sing where the real crowded things I'm not quite sure I followed that. And V says, hi, Grandma Anna. Sylvia, come back at me, love. Tell me what you were saying. And Grandma Anna says, hello, Sylvia. Don't understand your statement. Sylvia, I'm so glad you're here with us. Hanging out with us crazy girls. And guys, Mr. Reeves is with us. <laughs> All right. So do y'all remember how much uh, Walt was questioning Jacob about the amount of money that he was paying Sandra? And if you don't remember the exact amount, just take a ball ballpark figure. Jen says, the live was fun. I didn't win any stitch markers, though. 
Um, Sylvia says, sorry, Cynthia, medication. Did you talk about reading where the crawl dads sing? It's a book without you. Yes, that is the book that I finally got from the library. I put myself on a waiting list. My, my sister-in-law told me about the book and I put myself on a waiting list back in April, early April, and I had not heard anything. And I finally um, got a copy uh, Tuesday. I ran to the library. They had a copy for me and it's where the crawdads sing is the name of it. So yes, yes. That is correct, Sylvia. Um, Grandma Anna says close to 2K. Roseanne says 18,000. And V says first OK this Sunday, 6.30 p.m. I have my chat live in Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, 11 a.m. And I need to write that down because I need to set my alarm. I have all these alarms that go off. Um, I have one that goes off at 6 a.m. for Yarn Geek. All right, so V, 6.30. I apologize, y'all. Bear with me real quick because I really want to support her. And then Monday, Tuesday, the ones during the week, V, on my busy weeks, I will have to catch the replays just because I'm getting my beauty sleep at that time so I can go to work that night. All right, so I got that down. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I jumped ahead on a comment. I'm going to come back to that. Um, so, <laughs> Jen says 18,000. Roseanne says or 6,000. V says Sunday we're playing Family Feud. I love Family Feud. Maybe I can get the hubby to come join us. Um, Carrie the Arty Elephant, hello. We are um, talking about the um, Longmire movie season two, episode six and seven. We're on six right now. And at the current moment, we are talking about V, still the show Crochet and Chefs. She has a brand new channel. She did her first live last Sunday, V. And so on Sundays at 6.30, she has a live. And then Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, she has one at 11 a.m. So y'all go check it out. Give her a thumbs up. And um, if you're feeling like it, give me a thumbs up on my video tonight. But um, that's what we're talking about, Carrie. And so let's see. Um, she's telling us that we're going to play Family Feud this Sunday. So how fun, how fun, how fun. And Grandma Anna says, sounds fun, V. Grandma Anna says, hello, Carrie. V says, hi, Carrie. Jen says, hi, Carrie. Sylvia says, that's a very, very good book, Cynthia. You're going to love it. Um, Sylvia, I am very excited about it. My sister-in-law told me what it was back in, you know, April when I went to the library to reserve it. I'd forgotten. And my friend Kelly through YouTube, she um, went and Googled it and came back and told me that, yes, it has a coming of age story to it and a little bit of a murder mystery. So can't get any better than that. I'm excited. And she also said she thinks it's going to become a movie. So I know I waited a long time for that book. What? May, June, July, August, May, June, July, August, September, October, six months. I waited for that book. So it's got to be good. Um, Carrie says I need to add her. Yes, please do. Please add V on your, your, your list and subscribe to her channel. And Kelly says, Carrie, excuse me, says, hello, everyone. V says, yes, throw some yarn in my window. Yes, please go over and throw yarn in her window. And if you've not thrown yarn in my window yet, please throw yarn in my window. And for you, those of you that don't know what that is, um, Ginger on Yarn Geek, she, um, comes on every morning, 5 a.m. her time, which is Central, 6 a.m., which is my time, which is Eastern, and I'm not sure what the other times are for the other locations. I think Western, that's 7, I think. I'm not sure, but anyway, and she talks about that, going and throwing yarn in everyone's window and supporting them, so, but... Anyway, so yes, please go give V some yarn in her window. Um, 
Oh, and she says she has a giveaway on her channel. So definitely go check that out. And she says three gifts can be three winners. And I think everyone that's on here tonight that won on my live at seven already knows that they won. So, um, so we'll definitely have to go check that, that giveaway out, but I'm coming for the family few. That's what's got me excited. Um, Oh, good, good, good. Carrie says, oh, I have V. And V says, yes, Carrie, I have you too. So, and y'all know Carrie was one of the ones that was recognized on my subscriber shout outs. So, yay, Carrie. I appreciate your support and encouragement. And Carrie says, 3 a.m. Pacific. Oh, wow. I, thank you for helping me with that, Carrie. That's early. Well, not for me because I'm up all night with my job, but you know, for some people that might be early. Um, Carrie says, Oh my gosh, thank you. Did you not see that Carrie? Um, I don't remember which one it was. Actually, I can answer it for you because I'm getting organized. So I'm sorry, y'all Carrie real quick. You were on the shout out that went out on October 17th. So you'll definitely want to make sure you're on my seven o'clock live next Friday because we draw a name from that group of names for a little love gift giveaway from me. So, so go look at the October 17th video of Saturday shout outs on my channel, Carrie. And that's where your name was on there. And I posted a link in the description box for your, your channel. All right. Jen says, Alex is going to be the new Steve Harvey. What? I heard, are we, tell me what you mean by that, Jen. Because I heard rumors that Steve Harvey was leaving. But I'm so praying it wasn't true. So who's Alex? V says, don't forget, give her thumbs up. Thank you. Laugh out loud. Alex is too cute, says Grandma Anna. Carrie says, I can't wait to start my Longmire blanket. Oh, yes, Carrie. Um, v says, laugh out loud, laugh out loud, laugh out loud. Yes. Carrie says, okay, thank you. Carrie says, I've been trying to catch up. And Jen says, Family Feud. Grandma Anna says, Steve hosts Family Feud. Carrie says, I'm doing the Phoenix Blanket with, um, with Dana um, from Wonderless Crochet. Oh, my gosh. I, her, it's beautiful. It, that, if y'all if have not seen the Phoenix Blanket, go check out um, Carrie and Dana's channels. They're doing that Phoenix Blanket, and it is the most beautiful blanket I've ever seen. Um, Jen says, oh, V son. Yes. Duh. Jen. V. <laughs> I haven't eaten. I'm going to blame it on not having eaten. <laughs> v, I didn't know that Alex was your son. And Grandma Anna says V's cute son. Forgive me. Did y'all do Family Feud last Sunday too? <laughs> v says, thanks, Grandma. See, this is why we need gal pals to keep us straight. V says, no. Well, good. I didn't miss the fun. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Okay. So coming back to that question, if you remember what it was, how much was Jacob paying Cassandra? And he went and saw her three times and he was paying between six and nine thousand dollars is what Walt said. So I imagine one time was six thousand. The other time was nine thousand. But the third time. He did pay her eighteen thousand 
And why? Why did he pay her so much money? What was it specifically that that was going to? What was that all about? Because he clearly wasn't going to her for like a psychic reading. Grandma Anna says she knew where his daughter was. Roseanne says, so she didn't go to Branch's dad. Jen says, moving dead bodies. Okay. Deborah says, skeletons on property. So the reason he paid her so much money was she was good about finding... I guess, burial graves. And this land that he's purchased for the casino, he needs to make sure. Hey, Christy. Christy says, hi, Cynthia and friends. Welcome, welcome. We are on Longmire season two, episode six is what we're talking about. Jen says, move to Branch's dad property. V says, hi, Christy. Carrie says, I need to rewatch that series. We are in love with this series, Carrie. Jen says, hi, Christy. Grandma Anna says, hello, Christy. So Jacob has purchased the land for the casino. And the thing is, is when an Indian is buried on the land, <clears throat> you have to build around it and you have to create like some kind of sacred, you know, kind of burial ground thing, um, marking that life, so to speak, that, that body. So if there's any dead bodies on that land, it's going to interfere with the building of the casino. So he paid her money to basically find those bodies and move them. And yes, as Jen was saying, he ended up, she ended up moving them because she found some to, or one, to Branch's dad's property, which brought his construction to a halt. So let's see. Um, Christy says hi to everyone. So then as the conversation ends between Jacob and Walt, I found this hysterical. Jacob tells Walt that he liked his uniform, talking about the khaki pants that we were talking about earlier. And what did Jacob tell Walt that, the khaki pants uniforms made him look like. Oh yes. I meant to mention that grandma Anna. Yes. You were thinking about the other guy. You were thinking about the dad and the mom whose daughter Emma is missing. Grandma Anna says more official. Carrie says, hi, Christy. Jen says ready for the debate. And y'all are very close. He says, you look like somebody worth voting for. And again, I found that kind of like, because he's helping Branch, you know, pay for his campaign. But then he says to Walt, well, because they're so used to seeing him in jeans. He's like, well, you actually look like somebody worth voting for. <laughs> um, Roseanne says a winner. So. I'm sure Walt in those khaki pants did not give Jacob the same reaction it gave us girls. All right. So number 12, question 12. What do you think about Branch messing with the microphone during the debate? Branch, you're playing some dirty. Jen says, yes, worth voting for. Jen says, I love Walt's way out of it. With the microphone, I know. He's like, this proves my point. This is why I don't need technology. This is why I don't need a cell phone. It just gets in the way. <laughs> Um, Deborah says, but he has an agenda, Jacob. I mean, I'm sure 
I've not watched ahead, but, and plus, you know, I think he thinks that Branch is going to, one, be more lenient with things with the casino. Plus, we know that Walt and the Rez, in any way, shape, or form, again, we've already said, does not have that, you know, smell the flowers kind of relationship. So, yes, Jacob definitely has his own agenda. That is for sure, Deborah. Roseanne says he did think Walt would know what to do, would know what to do. Yes. This is my thing. Branch is still an honest guy. Like, if he wins, he wins. But, and, and he, he has a lot that he can bring to the table. He has a freshness about him, meaning, you know, being young, not set in a certain way. You know, Walt carries a lot of knowledge because he's been there so long. He knows the people. He knows the land. You know, he knows who's moving in and moving out. We talked about that last week. But Branch is like a fresh set of eyes, you know, a new way of thinking. But he also clearly and truly has respect for Walt. Like, I think he does like serving under Walt. I think that, yes, he would like to take on that challenge. But I also think we've already talked about this, too. He's got his dad constantly, blah, 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 blah in his ear, you know. But, um. Honestly, I kind of felt like Branch was helping Walt out because I agree so much with you, Roseanne, that that he knew that Walt would know what to do. And in a way, it really, really did play into Walt's hands. So deep down, I'm not saying Branch wouldn't be a good sheriff. I just think that I think Branch has a lot of respect for Walt and this is even outside of bringing Katie into the picture. I think he genuinely respects Walt and truly um, respects his leadership. And so, yeah. So I, I just, I was just curious what y'all thought. Roseanne says, um, oh wait, let's see. V says, I'm still here. Listen to you. I do crochet. I need to finish this off for my customers for next week. Go ahead, girl. That's what this is about. Um, Jen says, I don't think Branch knew Walt would handle the tech problem the way he did. Really? Sorry. I'm just kind of replaying the scene in my head. Um. I think the biggest thing that just continues to impress me about Walt is it doesn't matter what's going on, whether something's like working under pressure or not. He just has this just like given wisdom about him. Like he's just like calm, you know, and there's just, there's just a, a presence about him that commands the situation. I read ahead. Um, Roseanne says, yes, Jen. And Jen says, yes, it did. Jen says, Branch isn't ready for those khakis. No, he is definitely not ready for those khakis. <laughs> Deborah says, Branch doesn't really want to be sheriff so much anymore. Pushed by dear old dad. And I, I really, really agree with that. Because um, like even when Jacob tried to give him the questions, you know, he kind of he kind of deferred from the questions a minute. But then when Jacob went to leave, he says, well, hand them to me. You know, I mean, I agree with you. I, I deep down think that that Walt's going to stay sheriff. But we'll see. Time will tell. Grandma Anna says he stays cool. He really does. He really stays calm, cool, and collective. I mean, he's just really not just a classy, savvy guy. But, I mean, he's like really got a good head on his shoulders. And he has a great heart. 
You know, he doesn't do anything out of malicious or he doesn't jump to conclusions. He really is very thorough, you know. He's definitely going to have the facts before he states an opinion. And Roseanne says, um, right, uh, Roseanne says, Deb. And Grandma Anna says, Walt stays cool. Jen says he has experience. And that's a really good way to describe it, Jen. He does. He really embellishes the experience that he has. Not just the knowledge, but the experience. That's, that's really good. All right. Let's see. Question 13. What do you think about Katie questioning Branch at the debate? Which, of course, we know it didn't last long, but his old crazy Aaron came in there shooting it up. But <laughs> I did, too. It was one of my favorite scenes in that episode. Jen says, loved it. Grandma Anna says, too funny. Deborah says, good on her. Yes. Like I said, that was my favorite scene. All right. Roseanne says, she may still try to show him, show him she's over him at that time. Jen says, I hated that Aaron stopped it. I know, right? Because it was, it was good. I would have loved to hear what Branch had to say. Because she basically asked him, what makes you think that, you know, you're ready for this job? And, of course, we just, you know, I gave it away. Question 14, what interrupted the debate? And we already brought up, I brought up, Aaron interrupted it. What do you think, or who do you think, Aaron was calling a shiny lie? When he was in, in Walt's office now, after the courtroom scene, he was calling somebody a shiny lie. Grandma Anna says Cassandra, and remember Cassandra is his sister. Anybody else have a suggestion or comment? Jen says Henry. Well, at the time, Roseanne says, at first, I thought he meant Henry. Well, when it happened, he was getting ready to kind of, I don't think he was going to jump out the window, but he opened the window and was leaning out and hollering. And it cast down then to Branch. And Branch looks up at him. And so my first thought was, maybe branch like maybe he knew something you know about the campaign or whatever but then as it started going on and i got toward the end i thought he was talking about himself so i don't know hey crow joe mojo she says hello and jen says yes at branch i saw that too so i i still don't know if that was like a foreshadowing of something because maybe he saw something you know if, if if branch has gone to jacob at the res and talked to him out there which we know has happened still don't know who he was talking to in denver we never have learned quite yet who branch has been actually talking to in denver because remember it showed him talking to somebody in a business suit but it didn't show us who it was so i don't know anyway um Let's see. Hello, Bevy. Bevy is here. She says, hi, Cynthia. Jen says, hi, Crojo Mojo. Grandma Anna says, hi, Crojo. Roseanne says, hi. 
Grandma Anna says, hi, Bevy. Crojo Mojo says, I changed my name from Crafting Mojo to Crojo. So I need to make a note of that. Thank you for sharing that. Crojo Mojo. All right. Jen says, hi, Bevy. Deborah says, remember reverse dull truth? What now? What is that, Deborah? And Bevy says, hey, Jen. V says, hi, Mojo. Bevy says, hey, how's everyone? Doing good. V says, hello, Bevy. Bevy says, so happy I made it. Well, we're happy you made it, too. And Bevy says, hey, Steele. So she's telling V hi. And we're lagging. So let me know when we're back, guys. I'm going to stuff my face while we are. Oh, Roseanne says we're back. Good, good. I'm still going to stuff my face. Okay. So, Deborah, tell me what you meant by remember reverse dull truth. Jen says, I'm not lagging. Okay, good. Grandma says she's not lagging. Deborah says, isn't the reverse, isn't the reverse or backwards Indian? Yes, that's who Aaron is. He, he, wait. Isn't the reverse or backwards Indian? Are you talking about from the beginning that had on the mask? Are you telling us something we don't know? More details, more details. Crojo says, hello all. Grandma Anna says, please repeat. Um, well, we were still on that question about the shiny lie. I was waiting to see what Deborah was saying about the reverse or backwards Indian. I was trying to figure out if she's talking about the guy from the beginning, which is Aaron, Cassandra's brother, or if she was asking about something else. So I'm going to go on to the next question and give her a chance to respond. All right. So question 16, what did Henry say when Aaron attempted to jump out the window? He actually said, maybe he will fall. What do you remember? I just, I just thought it was funny because he says everything with a straight face and, and yet it's funny. Deborah says Aaron is backwards, so shiny lie would be dull truth. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That makes sense. Um, Grandma Anna says to his death, yes, Deborah, Roseanne, um, you're correct, that maybe he'll fall upward. Roseanne says maybe he'll fall up. Crojo says night all. Good night, Crojo. Roseanne says up. And Roseanne says, maybe he'll fall up. Yes, yes. He says, maybe he'll fall upward. <laughs> All right. Cassandra. Is she a fake? Or was she a psychic? Grandma Anna says, sweet dreams, Kojo. Kojo. Jen says, bye, Crojo. Grandma Anna says, Aaron was the real psychic. Jen says, psychic. Roseanne says, fake. Well, Deborah says, fake. Aaron was real. Some good thoughts. At this point in the episode, I thought she was fake. But toward the end, 
I thought maybe she was real. But then maybe she was just great at reading the paper and finding out details because they say that she described Emma with specific details that was in a newspaper article. But I didn't think about Aaron being a real psychic. So that's a great thought. That's a good, good. Roseanne says, right. Grandma Anna says, yep. All right. So, question 18. What two map properties did Branch not turn over to Walt with the ledgers and then confronted Jacob about? This is on that board that Branch and Vic found. And of all the properties, there was two properties that Branch did not give to Walt. But he chose to confront Jacob with them. And when Jacob asked for him, he's like, nope, I'm going to hang on to him. Let's see. Grandma Anna says, Aaron told the family where to find daughter. Yes, at the end he did. And, and we do have a question on that. Jen says, she was smart enough to figure it all out. I agree with that. Grandma Anna says dead Indian map. Deborah says, although Longmire wife changed my, it says property, but I think you mean perspective. Yes. And we're going to talk about that. Woo. That was great. Um, Jen says his dad's property and the casino property. Excellent. Yes. Good job, Jim. Yes. Those were the two properties he didn't hand over to him that were marked with, supposedly a dead body. And that was the casino property that Jacob had bought and the um, property that, um, what was his name? I wrote it down. Bart, Bartlett, what was his name? Oh, I can't remember Branch's dad's name. But the property that his dad had bought. Barlow. His dad's name is Barlow. So, yes, you're correct, Jen. Um, Roseanne says his dad. <coughs> Excuse me, and Deborah says yes. All right. So, question 19. What did Branch accuse Jacob of? So, they're still talking. This is all about confronting about the two properties. <coughs> Branch accused Jacob of doing something between those two properties. What was it? Y'all kind of already mentioned it a little bit back in the earlier part of the chat. Yes, Roseanne. Jen is saying repeat. So, and Deborah says moving bones. So, Walt accuses Jacob of doing something between those two properties. Um, Gr Grandma Anna says, sorry, daughter was talking to me, so I missed. So, we're talking about, <coughs> excuse me, Branch accused um, Jacob. of doing something between the two properties and, and you ladies are right. There was a body on the casino property and that's why Jacob paid Cassandra $18,000 to make that body disappear and put it on Branch's dad's property because of the fact that whenever an Indian is buried in the ground, it's considered sacred ground and you can't touch it. You can't touch that burial site. So Jacob, of course, knew that that would interfere with the casino building. So if there wasn't a body, then he'd be good. And so that's what Branch was accusing him of doing. But who did Jacob say made the switches? He didn't do it, but he said someone did. Who made the switches? Who put that body on 
the casino land over to um, Barlow's land. Yes, Roseanne and Grandma Anna, you're right. It was Cassandra, so the psychic. What did Branch then ask Jacob if he had? Because Cassandra did this. Now she's dead. So Branch directly asked him, um, if he had something. And what did he ask him if he had? It starts with an A. It's not proof, Deborah. Whenever there's a murder and they're questioning people, one of the first things they ask you for is your what? It starts with an A. Yes. He asked him if he had an alibi. Roseanne, Grandma, Anna, and Deborah, you all said alibi. Jen said alibi. Yes, yes. Who did Jacob say was his alibi? Roseanne says myself, and Jen says himself. Grandma Anna says himself. You ladies are all correct. He says, I am my alibi. All right. Question 23. Who did Barlow ask if they were at his house to arrest him? Somebody comes knocking on Barlow's door. Now, Barlow is Branch's dad. He opens the door, doesn't show us who's there. And he says, have you come to arrest me? Roseanne says branch. Jen says branch. Grandma Anna says branch. Yes, it was branch. Is that who you thought it was going to be? That's an extra question I'm just throwing in. Did y'all figure it was Branch or did you think it was somebody else? Roseanne says no. Grandma Anna says laugh out loud no. Me neither. I sure thought it was Walt. <laughs> but it was Branch. Jen says had to be. <laughs> This is another one of those funny moments. After their conversation, and Branch is getting ready to leave, he asks his dad for something. Do you remember what he asked his dad for? Jen says his attitude spoke. <laughs> Roseanne says, my coffee. Yes, he asked his dad for coffee. Why did he ask his dad for coffee? Think back to the last time they were together out on the land when the skeleton was found, the skull was found. There was something that was said in that conversation that made Branch asking his dad for coffee hilarious. Roseanne says questions. Grandma Anna says questions. The reason that was so funny is because when they were first coming to the property and Barlow's standing there, the skull's there, Jacob shows up and says, well, you can't continue construction. You have to work around this because it's a sacred burial ground. <coughs> Branch is there, Walt's there, and Barlow is yelling at Branch, do something. I mean, what kind of son are you? And, you know, 
I mean, I raised you to be a good sheriff and blah, blah, blah. And, and Branch is not really doing anything. And Barlow's like, so what are you going to do? I mean, because because Branch was being respectful to Walt. He was following Walt's commands and doing what Walt was telling him to do. And he says, so what are you going to do? Go fetch his coffee at the debate and the, and the campaign or the election? So he's like, what are you, weak? And so when Branch goes to his dad's house and confronts him, he's like, oh, yeah. And I want my coffee. <laughs> In other words, he's going to make his dad go fetch the coffee for him. So it was hilarious. I loved it. So Roseanne says, got it. Grandma Anna says, laugh out loud, got it. All right. Question 25. So who killed Cassandra? We kind of already talked about this, but. Yes, everybody's saying Aaron. It was her brother. <coughs> Why? Why did he kill her? Um, Roseanne says, cut off his drinking. TSBSV. Deborah says, booze. Grandma Anna says, she wouldn't pay his drinking tabs anymore. Roseanne says, tabs. And that is all correct. She was, you know, going around paying off all of his tabs. And Jen says, because she said he'd have to go into a home. The, the, the main reason was she was going all over town paying off all of his beer tabs. And so she had all this debt that made her look like the alcoholic, but she was sober. And that was one thing that Vic brought up or Walt did. <coughs> For someone who's supposedly having a drinking problem, there was not one lick of alcohol in her home. And that's when they realized that, you know, she was going around paying off his debt. And he told her, she finally told him enough was enough. She wasn't going to do it anymore. So, yep, that was it. All right. Sylvia says, good night, Cynthia. Good night, everyone. God bless you all. Good night, Sylvia. I hope you feel better, love. Get you some rest, okay? And take care of you. All right. Grandma Anna says, sweet dream, Sylvia. Roseanne says, good night, Sylvia. God bless you. Jen says, night, Sylvia. Deborah says, night, Sylvia. I do hope you feel better. I don't like it when you don't feel good. All right, 27. Who did Aaron say he needed to talk to? When Walt was taking him to the station, he's, he's arrested him. He knows that Aaron has killed Cassandra, but Aaron stops him and says, um, there's somebody I need to talk to. Yes, Roseanne. She says Emma's um, parents, the family of the missing girl, the parents. Yes, the Callies was, was their name. And um, he said that, that he needs to talk to them. And we've already mentioned this, but what did he tell them? Yes, Jen. She said the parents. Roseanne says she's alive to tell them where Emma was. Jen says where Emma was. Roseanne says alive. Yes. He specifically told them that Emma's in Vermont outside of Burlington in a blue house. And of course, Walt asked him if that was the truth. And he said, yes. All right. Whew. Here comes the heavy scene. 
What did Walt show Katie? Roseanne says tape recorder. Grandma Anna says the tape from her mother. Deborah says mom's tapes. Jen says tape recorder of mom. Yes, yeah, so apparently her mom had gone to see Cassandra <clears throat> to basically ask if, um, let me make sure I'm not answering the question. And I would have been, so let me back up. So yes, he showed her a tape recording of her mom and Cassandra talking. What was it that she was talking to Cassandra about? She went specifically asked Cassandra if something was going, if she was going, if something was going to kill her. And what was that about? Yes, Grandma Anna, her cancer. What did Cassandra tell her? Was she going to die from the cancer? Yes, Jim, cancer. Jen says, no, it wouldn't. Grandma Anna says, no, the cancer won't kill her. Roseanne says, no. <clears throat> That's right. She told her that, no, it was not the cancer that was going to kill her. So then I asked the question again. Deborah says cancer, but she wouldn't die from it. <coughs> <clears throat> it's warm in here, y'all. That's why I'm coughing. It does that with my diabetes. All right. Um. Question 31. So is Cassandra a fake or is she real? Is she a psychic? <clears throat> what do you think now? I know, right? Roseanne says, hmm. Jen says, no, just very smart. <clears throat> All this time, I thought she was a fake. But after that, I kind of got the impression that maybe she wasn't. I still think that she went above and beyond to find out certain details, maybe to up the ante, up the expense of, you know, paying her for a psychic reading. Because she could really give them something that would be legit. So I do think she scammed them. But I, I kind of began to think at that moment that maybe she had a little bit of the gift too. But <clears throat> Grandma Anna says, no, she was real. Roseanne says, hmm. Jen says, not, no, just very smart. Deborah says, real and Aaron too. Jen says, Yes, to show proof to people. So, two more questions for this, this episode. Question 32. What did Katie do when the recording of Cassandra asked her mom if she wanted to know what would happen to Walt? <clears throat> and before her mom could answer, what did Katie do? Grandma Anna says turned it off. Jen says stopped it. Roseanne says shut the recorder off. <clears throat> That's right. She stopped it. She turned it off. And what did Walt say when she did that? Yes, Roseanne. <clears throat> exact words. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Grandma Anna says, you want to hear the rest? Jen says, we'll find out in time. That's right. Well, when it happens, we'll know. We'll find out. All right. Episode seven. It's called Sound and Fury. 
All right. At the very beginning, we're at the Red Pony. Katie's actually there helping Henry at the bar and taking orders, customers' orders. What did Henry, question number one, what did Henry overhear at the Red Pony? He heard some guys talking at a table. What did he overhear? Oh, Jen says, I want to hear the answer. I know. Me too. I want to know what she said or what her prediction was. Right? Roseanne says, a hit put out. Jen says, hit man job. Deborah says, murder for hire. Absolutely. Grandma Anna says, man trying to buy a hit on his wife. Absolutely. Who did Henry offer to him to kill her? Jen says himself. Roseanne says himself. Grandma Anna says himself. I was like, what? What are you thinking? It is really clever, y'all. I mean, y'all know what happened. You saw it. That was clever, swift thinking on Henry's part. So he's not only good looking, but he's smart too. <clears throat> Sorry, Mr. Reeves. Um, <laughs> uh, who did Henry go talk to afterwards though? <laughs> Everybody's saying yes, laugh out loud, laugh out loud. <laughs> Roseanne says Walt, Jen says Walt, Grandma Anna says Walt, yes, and um, Vic and Branch were also there as well. <clears throat> um, Roseanne says the biker guy, and Deborah says Longmire. So he he did go, he, he went to the sheriff's office, and he talked to Walt and Vic and Branch, <clears throat> and then question number four, who did they include later in the conversation that could possibly, excuse me, possibly identify the man? <clears throat> Roseanne and Grandma Anna said Katie and Jen said did in question mark um, Jen says Katie yes <clears throat> so I thought it was funny they questioned her about two men she says there were two men she says she only saw one man and what did she say about him the one man that she could remember. Jen says he's hot. Roseanne says he's hot. Grandma Anna says handsome. I thought it was funny because she was like, oh yeah, he was hot. And then it's like she realized she's talking to her dad and Henry and then her eyes kind of go over and she's like, he was handsome. <laughs> so y'all are all right <clears throat> question number six Walt asked well who was the handsome one the husband or the hitman and what did Henry say that was just as funny what did Henry say <laughs> uh telling you this show is awesome <laughs> mm, my face hurts Jen says I'm not up on hot Roseanne says question mark Jen you have it his exact words were I'm not a good judge of hotness All right, question seven. What did Katie say was on his vest? 
She says she remembered there was something on the guy's vest. Do you remember what it was? <coughs> Roseanne says brown hog construction. Grandma Anna says eagle logo. And Jen says logo for construction company. And it was... Um, Specifically, a brown hawk construction label. Um, was it the husband or was it the hitman? <coughs> Grandma Anna says, I knew it was a bird. Laugh out loud. Jen says, hitman. Grandma Anna says, hitman. Yeah, so it wasn't the husband. The husband's name is Bill, and it was a guy named Richard that he was asking him if he would do it. All right. What four names did Walt give Vic for her and Branch to go to every bank in the county and find a woman that was married to a man with one of these four names? Do you remember what they were? Grandma Anna says, can't remember, sorry. Roseanne says, Joshkin Hydemuth. Jen says, ben, uh, excuse me, Bill William Will. Roseanne says, Jocelyn. It was Bill, Billy, William, and Will. <laughs> Then Highsmith is what Roseanne says. Roseanne says, ooh. Yep, he says, go look for a woman who's either married to a Bill, Billy, William, or Will. Oh, I know what you're saying. You're trying to say his last name, I think, Roseanne. <clears throat> so they have the, um, the recording device set up. On Henry's phone at the Red Pony, waiting for the husband, Bill, to call. And when the phone rings, they get everything set up and recording. Henry answers the phone. And who's on the other line? Who called him? <laughs> yes. Roseanne, you are correct. It was Dina. Dina. Grandma Anna says, Henry's girlfriend. Yes. And what a call that was. <clears throat> Jen says, Dee Dee or his passion. <laughs> Roseanne says, hit conversation. <laughs> um, hot conversation. Yes. That was very funny. Grandma Anna says, that was so funny. It was. It was kind of like, um, and I love Ferg's expression. That's what made it was Ferg's expression. Ferg was like, <laughs> <clears throat> Jen says, I couldn't remember her name. Yeah, D Dina. Um, she spells it D-E-D-E-E-N-A. Number 11, what did Ferg say about the equipment? <clears throat> he made that look and then he said something about the equipment. <laughs> Roseanne has this big smiley emoji face. <laughs> laughing hard, crying and laughing. <clears throat> yes, Roseanne. He says, well, at least we know it's working. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Question number 12. Yes, Grandma Anna. He said it, it was working. And Grandma Anna says, we know we now know it works. All right. Question 12. Who did Vic run into?
we kind of talked about this at the very beginning when we were talking about which episode we liked the best. Uh, Roseanne says the CR cop from Philly. Grandma says a guy from Philly, previous cop. <clears throat> and Roseanne says cop or ex cop. <clears throat> Jen says ex-partner. Yes, his name is Ed Gosky. And do you remember what he called Vic when she walked by? She she glanced at him, but she didn't, I don't think she really recognized that it was him. Because she then, she glanced, walked, she glanced, glanced away and kept walking. But then he called out to her. And then she turned and realized who he was. <clears throat> Yes, I think that's her last name. Um, he called her Moretti. Very good, Roseanne. Jen says her original name. Yes. <clears throat> what did he say he was doing there? Question number 14. What did he say he was doing there? Jen says vacation with wife. Grandma says retired and driving through. Roseanne says padding through. He told her he was there on vacation with his wife and they were so close that he said, oh, passing through, that he had to stop. And I'm like, mm, yeah, I bet there's no wife with him. That was my first thought. Like, I just didn't believe him. But um, anyway, question number 15. Who did he ask Vic about? I thought this was really odd. Good. I'm glad I wasn't the only one, Grandma Anna. She says, I thought that as well. Yes, Roseanne, her husband. Yes, Jen, her hubby. Yeah, he, he asked her about her husband. And do you remember where he told Vic that he and his wife were supposedly staying? Grandma Anna says RV Park. <clears throat> Jen says campground. Yes, he told her that they were staying at the Two Moons RV Park. So, yes, you guys have got it right. Grandma Anna, Jen, Roseanne, RV Park at the Two Moons. How did he give her his cell phone number? <laughs> Classic high school move. <laughs> Jen says he wrote it on her hand. Roseanne says wrote on her hand. Grandma Anna says wrote on her hand. Yeah, he wrote it on her hand. And they exchanged that, yeah, maybe they'll get together for dinner or a drink. She's going to walk away. And he says something to her. What did he remember and say to her? She was walking away. Roseanne says, go Eagles. Grandma Anna says, he'll pay. Um, all that happened. My Roseanne says, my team, I'm from Philly. Oh, <laughs> got you. Yes. Oh, yeah, Jen, she cringed. But what did he say to her? I mean, he already said, hey, I'll pay. I don't make a lot, but I'll pay. But then she goes to walk away and he says something. And she turns around and looks at him. And he says it again. Do you remember what he said?
Grandma Anna says, how's Sean? Jen says, bring your husband. Jen says, question mark. <clears throat> no, you're right. He says, Sean. Your husband's name is Sean. That's exactly what he said to her. Sean. Your husband's name is Sean. Grandma Anna, he did. In the beginning of the conversation, he asked her how her marriage was. And Roseanne saying yes to those, those answers. Yeah. So again, it's weird that he's kind of zoned in on her husband. So now it makes me worried. Is, is, is it maybe not just her that might be in some kind of danger, but maybe her husband too. All right. Question number 19. What did Bill tell Henry? So when Bill finally calls Henry on the phone and they're recording the conversation, what does he say to him? Right, Jen. He did, he did tell her that he was checking on her to find her <clears throat> through her husband. Yes, Grandma Anna. Bill called Henry and called off the hit. So I was like, oh, well, shucks darn. <laughs> that doesn't help. All right. He told me he found someone else to do the job. Did Ed's wife come with him to grab a beer with Vic that night? That's right, Roseanne. The deal is off. Grandma Anna says he had found someone else. Very correct. Roseanne says no. Grandma says no. Jen says no. Deborah says no. That, that is correct. He, he, she did not come with him. I didn't expect her to. I don't even think she's there. <laughs> I think he's rogue. I think he's on this mission all by himself. That's my opinion. From the get-go, I didn't think she was there. Roseanne says, me too. All right. He buys a beer. I agree, Jen. Jen says, I don't even think there is a wife. I don't either. Roseanne says, hidden agenda. And Deborah says, he's a turd. And Grandma Anna says, laugh out loud, Deborah. He definitely is, Deborah. So he buys this beer. He sets this glass over here and he's clearly not touching it. Okay. He makes it clear. Roseanne says temptation, right? He's an alcoholic. Who does he tell Vic made him an alcoholic? Jen says he's an alcoholic. Yes, he's an alcoholic. Grandma Anna says her. Yes. Roseanne says Bobby and her. Deborah says job. No, he tells her I'm an alcoholic because of you. Or his exact words. So this is question number 22. It's just it's just kind of like a yes, Jen, Vic. This is just kind of like a. A thinking question. Do you still think Vic is in trouble? And is it Ed that sent those flowers? We don't have an answer. It's just one of those thought questions. Grandma Anna says, yes, big trouble. Jen says, yes, with an exclamation point. I do, too. Roseanne says, hmm, yes, trouble. <laughs> Grandma Anna says, no, it was ex-cop. But I, I, I think that's who this is, is the ex-cop. Deborah says, stalker trouble. 
He's definitely asking too many questions about her husband and what their relationship is like right now. So, but yeah. I think so, Jen. Jen says, I think he wanted to control her in the past. And it's clear that Vic is not one that can be controlled. <laughs> she can definitely stand her ground. She's definitely got some girl power. All right. 23. Branch is in the car. Deborah says, still does. Oh, I agree. I, I clearly agree. And it's clear that he has some kind of resentment or animosity towards her, too, because when he's talking to her and telling her she's responsible for him being an alcoholic, I don't think it's just necessarily things about the job. I think it's like Sorry, Mr. Reeves. I think it's like some sexual tension there. She's not returning. She's not reciprocating the feelings that he wants her to. So, yeah, Jen, he's seeking her out. And this is true, Deborah. Very, very good point. He did lose his job. Well, that wasn't her fault. Jen says, right. So, yeah. But time will tell if that reveals itself in this season or not. All right. So Branch is sitting outside of Bill's wife's, uh, her name's Diane, friend's condo. He's in the car and the phone rings. Who calls him? Roseanne says Katie pocket dials. Grandma Anna says he likely lost job for harassment of Vic. Grandma Anna says Katie. Jen says Diane. It was Katie. Um, excuse me a minute, ladies. Todd. I think that's your phone ringing. Um, I don't think she butt dialed him. I think she was really calling him. Maybe because she questioned him at the debate, which even though this is now last episode, but she questioned him at the debate and it never, you know, they, they didn't finish the debate. So I don't know. Maybe she's reaching out. I don't know. doesn't matter because... Uh, did they talk? What did he do? Jen says, Katie, that's right. Grandma Anna says, I think so too. Roseanne says, no. Deborah says, change his mind when he answers. Jen says, no. Walt showed up. Grandma Anna says, no, he hung up phone. Roseanne says, Walt came in the, ca in the car um, yeah, he hung up on her because Walt jumps in his car. Well, he's not about to talk to her with him there. So he hangs up on her. So that'll be fun to see how that turns out because she's probably like, what? Because, you know, before she was kind of being the one that was pulling away. And now she calls him and he hangs up on her. Of course, she don't know that her dad just got in the car. But so I, I, I hope in the next episode that that plays out. But anyway, so yes, he's hung up on her because why? Question number 25, Walt got into the deputy car. 26, Branch's phone rings again. Is it Katie? Who is it? Who's calling them now? Is she calling them back? Roseanne says Ruby. Grandma Anna says no, it's Ruby. Jen says it's Henry. Grandma Anna says F9 or Walt. Jen says for Walt. Yes, it is Ruby. Ruby's, Ruby is calling to get in touch with Walt. 
And what message did she have for Walt? Uh, Grandma Anna says for Walt, yes. Ruby has called Branch's phone for Walt. So I'm sure that, that Branch has told Ruby that he's going to go where Branch is surve sur doing surveillance and join him. Yes, Roseanne. She calls to tell him that Bill is, is dead 200 miles away. So... Now it shows a scene of Ferg and Vic and Ferg is like, how did he do this? Because he was surveillance in him and he never came out. Jen says, yes, Roseanne. Um, talking about that Bill is dead. So if Ferg is keeping an eye on Bill and watching for him to come out of the construction site where his lawyer dropped him off, how did he end up 200 miles away dead? How did he get out of there? without Ferg seeing him. Roseanne says slipped out back. Grandma Anna says he went out by train. Deborah says jumped on train. Yes, there's a train that runs through the back Roseanne says, yes, the train. Jen says the train. There's a train that runs through the back and he got on the train. There was a girl and she was talking with Walt. And what did she give Walt? All right, Deborah says camera, Grandma Anna says question mark, Jen says pick of zipper tag, and Roseanne says pick of zip. All right, she gives him a picture, and I'll be honest, I wasn't real sure who the picture was of. She just said, yeah, the body was right there. So I don't know if, that was the body and then the train left and went 200 miles away with him and it was Bill's body or if it was a picture of Zip doing something to Bill. But my impression was it was Bill's dead body She because she said she went to jump on the train and the body was just laying there. So I have a feeling that it was Bill's dead body that um, I'm going to hold that thought, which I've already kind of mentioned, but that basically Zip killed. We now know that. But, and then the train left and she didn't get on that train because I guess there's just some kind of, you know, rule that they only jump on one at a time and take the train back and forth. So if you see somebody get on, you wait for the next one, so to speak, was the impression I got. But Jen says that she thinks it was a picture, picture of Zip. So, I don't really know. And they never really clarified it. So that's why I was thinking that maybe it was Bill's dead body. She got back off the train and the train left and went to the next destination 200 miles away. Oh, definitely, Jen. Zip was definitely not someone to hang with. I, I definitely agree with you there. So, all right. So she got he got a picture from her. That we know for sure. Did Diane seem sad about Bill's death? Was she even sad when, when Branch told her that her husband was dead? Um, Roseanne says, nope. Grandma Anna says, no. Jen says, not really, no. No, she wasn't. I mean, she didn't even like, pretend to be sad. I mean, there was no tears, no 
gasping, no, what? You know, no shock. I was like, your first thought is, yeah, she done gone and killed her husband. But it was just too easy. It, it was just too easy. So I knew it wasn't her because, well, then the show would have been over and there was too much show left. It, it, we were still just getting started. So Jen says, not really, no. All right. Jen says, I think she wanted Branch for some what, what? Well, yeah, I mean, well, let me go turn off the shower. And then she comes back out. And, well, she's practically wearing not much of anything and definitely didn't leave any imagination uh, wondering because, you know, she had that sexy little uh, uh, not really a house coat, but lingerie cover up on. Yes, there you go, Jen. In half of a robe. <laughs> and, and, and the stress is on half. <laughs> Um, anyway, <laughs> Roseanne, Roseanne says he knew he wanted to, well, it wasn't like Katie was, you know, in the picture really anymore. Jen says, yep. So love you, Mr. Reeves. Love you, Mr. Joyful Todd. <laughs> Um, he was like, what I want, what I want, what I really, really want. <laughs> All right. Too much root beer for me tonight. Um, what did Branch say about Diane's friend's condo? He ended up calling Walt to tell him how she took the news. <laughs> Jen says, yep. Grandma Anna says, laugh out loud. He calls Walt to tell him how she took the news, but he said, <laughs> I love it. And Grandma Anna has a monkey going. Yeah, Jen, the condo was staged. He told Walt something was not right. So he did some digging and the condo is not, um, well, first of all, he said it felt like something. How did he describe the condo? He said it wasn't like somebody was like living there. It felt more like something else. Do you know what he said? Well, she did know the place very well, Roseanne. Um, yeah, Grandma Anna, it was too perfect. He said it was like a model home. Jen says empty. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was just like a model home. It wasn't like a lived-in home because, and I didn't catch it at first, but it wasn't until he was talking to Walt on the phone that it dawned on me what he was really showing us. But if you'll remember... When he walks through the kitchen, he runs his finger along the top of the microwave, but he doesn't say anything. And I saw this blue strip, you know, like when you're unboxing your microwave or whatever, and it has all these um, still, um, Jen says, love nest, possibly, because, you know, we know she was divorcing her husband, but I think I just gave away an answer to a question. But anyway, it had the blue strip still on it. So clearly the microwave has not been used because it still has part of the clear packaging blue tape on it. Exactly, Jen. It had the blue tape on it. It was like, and I saw that and I was just like, well, that's weird. But then when he was talking to Walt, he's like, yeah, it was like it was a model home. It wasn't lived in. So what did he find out? Who, who was her friend's name that, that the condo was supposedly under? Right, Grandma Anna, it had the packaging tape still on it. Do you know whose name the condo was in? Yes, Grandma Anna, she, she was indeed divorcing her husband. And therefore, Jen says, question mark, it wasn't in a friend's name. It was in her name. That's right, Grandma Anna. It wasn't a real person. It was her. The condo was actually listed in her name. And as we just we just answered question number 33, um, 
Roseanne says, yes. What did Diane see a lawyer about? They found out she was seeing a lawyer and it was about divorcing her husband. So, um, do you know how long ago from this moment it had been since she started filing for a divorce process or processing the divorce? Do you know how much time had gone by? Right, Jen. It had been six months. So for six months, she had already started a divorce process to, to leave Bill. But what was she waiting on? She was waiting for something to happen before she had her attorney serve him with the divorce papers. What was she waiting for? Yes, Grandma Anna, it was six months. Right, Roseanne. She was waiting for the mother-in-law to die. So, what? Was it because of an inheritance? Right, Grandma Anna. Mother-in-law to die, Roseanne says, and the money. So, um, Jen says she was sick. Yes. Roseanne says money. Yes. His mom was sick and she was dying and she claims, which I didn't believe her, that it wasn't about the money, which clearly it was. She says, well, his mom's dying. So I'd rather wait till after she's passed to send him divorce papers than to present them to him when his mom is on her deathbed. Yeah, right. Because I'm sure her mom wasn't that sick six months ago. So, yeah, it was about the money, clearly. Yes, Grandma Anna. Yes, to get more money. Greedy, greedy woman. All right. Um, do you remember how many days they said it had been between Bill's mom dying and him being found dead? Good job, Roseanne. 10 days. That's right. There were 10 days between Bill's mom dying and Bill uh, being killed. Yes, Jen. 10 days, Grandma Anna. 10 days. All right. Question 37. Who is the mystery caller that called Henry? At the time, I had no clue. I didn't have an answer for that question. But as it went on, I eventually got the answer. Yes, Roseanne. Very good. It was Zip. And as we've already learned, not someone you want to be associating with. Yes, Grandma Anna, it was Zip. All right. Who did Bill call on the lawyer's phone? So when the lawyer discovered that there was a number on his phone to the Zip guy, the lawyer was shocked, but then he said, oh, did I just tell you the answer? Well, yeah, kind of, sort of, but y'all got it. It's Zip. <laughs> so who did Bill call on the lawyer's phone? The killer. He called Zip. That's right. But before we know all that, who did Vic think the killer was? Yes, Jen. She thought it was Ed. Mr. Ed, Ed. All right. Question 40. Did Branch wait for backup at Diane's? Now, this is back at her, her real house, her real home. She's not at the condo anymore. And he traces her to, the, to her actual house. And no. Walt told him to wait for backup, but he did not wait for backup. And do you remember what was in the front yard? Yes, Roseanne. It was a motorcycle. 
Roseanne's, yeah, motorcycle. And for no moment did I think that it was Bill's. Like, I didn't even realize that Bill had had a motorcycle. I don't even remember them mentioning that anywhere. She said, well, I thought it was Bill, so I just came on in. And I'm thinking, no, that's the one that the biker dude was reporting stolen to Walt. So I knew right away that that was the biker dude's motorcycle. But my thought was, yeah, her and this Zip guy are in on this this killing of her husband. And so I thought, well, maybe Zip is her her lover or something. But uh, moving along, we'll come back to that. So no, Branch did not wait for backup. 41, what Shakespeare story did the phrase, life is a tale told by an idiot? Which one did that come from? Do you know? Life is a tale told by an idiot. What Shakespeare play was that in? Very good, Jen. It was in Macbeth. Awesome, awesome. Um, just, yes, Grandma Anna, Macbeth. Roseanne, you're correct, Macbeth. Just, just a out there question. Any of y'all Shakespeare fans? Just, just curious. Got any Shakespeare fans in the house? <laughs> Roseanne says no. Jen says no. Grandma Anna says shh. Don't mention that name. Laugh out loud. Jen says I hate to read. Well. Then I'm your nerdy nerd geek girl. <laughs> I love Shakespeare and I love to read. <laughs> Grandma Anna says, I never got to read him much. So, I mean, there's some that I would pick over Shakespeare, but I mean, it, it's good. If you can get through, you know, a lot of those, you know, weird narratives and whatnot, but. Oh, me too, Grandma Anna. She says, I love to read. So that's one of the reasons I was thinking about reading on my channel. But, you know, again, I'm so leery about copyright. So I haven't quite made the decision on that yet. But as Sylvia brought up, I finally, after six months, got that book that I've been on a waiting list for called Where the Crawdads Sing. So I am hoping to start that very, very soon. So, all right. Um, moving along, question 42, what did Zip say Henry's life was worth? When he's standing with Henry in Henry's office with the gun on him and Henry's like, if you're going to kill me, just do it. And Zip says, no, your life is worth what? Oh, wait, let me see. Um, Grandma Anna says, that's why I was thrilled to win the bookmark. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Roseanne says 200,000. Grandma Anna says 2K. Jen says right out of town. Yay, Jen. You're right. He says no. You are worth a ride out of town. <laughs> All right. Question 43. We're almost done, y'all. We've got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more questions. What did Walt give Zip for Henry's life? Henry, I mean, uh, Walt ends up driving up to Henry and Zip on the road, on the, on the dirt back road. And yes, absolutely. Grandma Anna says, grats, Jen. Roseanne says, his truck keys. Jen says, keys to his truck and phone. <laughs> That's funny. And Grandma Anna says his truck keys. Yeah. He tells Zip, here, take my truck and go. You can go to another town and sell it, whatever. And what else does Zip ask for from Walt? Jen, you mentioned it. <laughs> yes, we know that Walt doesn't have a phone. But yes, Roseanne, he asked for Walt's cell phone. And uh, question 45, where did Walt tell Zip his cell phone was? Yes, Grandma Anna and Roseanne's cell phone. Where did he tell Zip his cell phone was? Yeah, 
Yes, Jen. Good job, Roseanne. In the truck. He says, yeah, it's in the truck. It's on the seat. <laughs> yes, Grandma Anna, in the truck. I was laughing because you're right. We all knew. Well, don't have no cell phone. <laughs> but that's all right. Let, it, let, this, let the boy think that there's a cell phone in there. Yes, Roseanne says, yes, laugh out loud. So another humor moment that tickled me. Um, and Grandma Anna says, me too. All right. Question 46. Henry told Walt not to do this, and Walt said he had to. Were they talking about the truck? When, when Henry says, Walt, you don't have to do this, and Walt says, yes, I do. Were they talking about the truck? Deborah says, no. Roseanne says, I thought so. Grandma Anna says, give him truck. Jen says, friendship. I don't think they were talking necessarily about the truck either. I think they were talking about, I agree with Jen. I, I think they were talking about their friendship because Walt's like, um, you know, I got $20 in my pocket, but his friendship is worth more because I've known him since he was a boy. And so I thought Henry was saying, Walt, don't do this, meaning Walt shooting. And Walt's like, I have to. And then, well... He shot him. But what did Walt say after he shot Zip? Yeah, I agree, Grandma Anna. It was about Walt shooting Zip. And so after he shot him, what did Walt say to Henry? So Walt. So classic Walt. <laughs> about as classic as, yeah, my cell phone's in on the truck seat. <laughs> what did Walt say to Henry? Mr. Reeves, do you know what Walt said to Henry? <laughs> yes, Deborah. Roseanne's question mark. Deborah says, can't let him have the truck. Walt's like, I couldn't let him take my truck. <laughs> Grandma Anna says, I couldn't allow him to have truck. That's right. That man's not going to give up his truck. Not to this low life. <laughs> Jen says, right. Question 48. Did Walt kill Zip? Jen says no. Roseanne says yes. Grandma Anna says yes. No, I don't think he did because Zip was still groaning on the ground. Yeah, Jen, Jen, he got shot in the shoulder. Yeah, all, all Walt did was put him down and, and not uh, dis, disarm him is all he did. He just disarmed him so that the two of them could have the upper hand of him um, because, like Walt said, he went and given him his truck. All right. Question 49. The big question why did Zip kill Bill to start with? So in the end, why why was it that that Zip killed Bill? Roseanne says money. Grandma Anna says money. Jen says he wasn't worth his value. And the main reason was he called the hit off and there, therefore that meant that Zip wasn't going to get paid anymore. So I think he was going to try and rob him. And in the end, um, one of you brought up this amount earlier. Um, come to find out Bill was only worth $2,000. 
and just throwing it out there. Do you remember how much money he actually took from Diane when he jumped Diane and tied her up at her home? She told them that he got away with how much money? Do you remember? This is true. Very true, Jen. Jen, any man that wants to kill his wife, he's not worth his value. Absolutely. Roseanne says a hundred. Grandma Anna says a hundred. She actually gave him five hundred. So now I don't know if he got the two thousand that Bill was worth or not, but he did get the five hundred from her. So, but anyway. That is all the questions I have for that episode. Any comments or anything about those two episodes that we didn't bring up or mention? Um, any thoughts about what's going to come about with uh, Branch hanging up on Katie? Any thoughts about the debate? Will they have another debate? They were both good episodes, Grandma Anna. Really, they all are. Like this, this is one of the best series I've seen in a while. Um, <laughs> far better than the crazy series I'm watching at work when I have slow time. I think so too, Jen. I think in the end that Walt won the debate. I, I really do. Even though they were questioning him about Vic and all of that, I still think he got the upper hand. He's showing them that he's still with it. He's still alert. He's still, you know, focused. Roseanne says maybe Branch will get with Diane. Maybe. Um, although I would be leery about that too, because you know, even though, you know, yeah, her husband wanted to kill her, but you know, she she had no remorse on his death. So I don't know. Um let's see. Roseanne Alexander says, Yes, me too. Um Grandma Anna says, I want to see Walt and Liz get together. I know, right? What are they waiting for? I mean, I want him to open the present. <laughs> I'm waiting for him to still open the present. Um, Jen says, what are you watching at work? Uh, Jen says, Roseanne, laugh out loud. Jen says, you'll see. Okay, so this crazy show I'm watching at work, this crazy series, I'm in... Season two, I think there's three, maybe four seasons. And I'm just going to tell you some background because I'm going to justify why I'm even watching this crazy, crazy show. But um, I'm a big, um, I know, right, Grandma Anna? At least open the gift. I mean, come on. Um, it's not my gift and I want to see what's in it. <laughs> but um. I'm a big Drew Barrymore fan. I just, I love Drew Barrymore. And she's a great actress and she really does really good shows. So there's this show on that she's in. So I start watching it. It is called The Santa Clarita Diet. It is the, I shouldn't say the weirdest thing I've ever watched because I've watched some weird things before, but. Um, is anybody watching that? Have they watched it? Have they heard it? Because I don't want to say anything that would spoil it if you are and I'm further than you or. Um, Grandma, uh, let's see. Jen says I like her too. Grandma Anna says I like her too. Grandma Anna says, ah, I heard it's good. Roseanne says no. Jen says no. Okay, so I have no clue what it was about. It just had Drew Barrymore in it and that's all I needed to know. Grandma Anna says, no, I haven't seen it. Well, I'm not going to go into great detail because if you decide to watch it, then you really need to watch it for yourself. 
But long story short, they're this suburbium type family. Oh, really, Deborah? Deborah says, started watching Yellowstone so far and not impressed. Wish it was more like Longmire instead of Dallas. Ew. Which, you know, Dallas in its day back in that time, the 70s and 80s, was like great TV show. But a lot of drama. A lot of drama. I didn't really watch Dallas as much as... And back then, I was a really young girl, so I didn't really care for all that kind of stuff. It just seemed kind of eh to me because I was really young. But I used to watch with my grandparents, and it was the fact that I was watching it with my grandparents. Um, it wasn't Dallas. It was, um, oh, gosh, Knott's Landing. My grandparents loved Knott's Landing. And I would watch Knott's Landing with them. But, you know, I was really young. I'm talking early, you know, to middle elementary school years. And yeah, that was not probably something I should have been watching. But I love that time with my grandparents. But anyway, so it says Yellowstone seems more intense. And yes, Grandma Anna, you, you were right. It's Knott's Landing. But I heard, yeah, that's one of the things that's in our little cup up here for us to draw after... Um, what is it, Jen? Call the midwife? Call the midwife? Because after this, we're doing call the midwife. And then we'll draw again. And we may refresh our our, um, our series. In fact, I know we'll do that. We'll go back through and see what's in there because I can't even remember what's in that cup. But we'll see what's in the cup after we do call the midwife. Jen says the daughter. What is that? The daughter? Oh, call the do call the daughter. Grandma Anna says, I love Call the Midwife. Well, that's what we're doing next, Grandma Anna. And we're going to make a midwife blanket. So very, very excited. It'll be obviously easier than the Longmire blanket. I do hope y'all are enjoying the Longmire blanket. I am, but, you know, not just because I'm designing it, but I can see mine. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just turning out really pretty. And it's the colors. And by the way, I love y'all's blankets. Like it just amazes me how we're doing the same pattern. And it's the same pattern, but the different colors make them look so different. Oh, I just, I can't wait for all of you to see each other's. It's just, oh my gosh, it's going to be so much fun. Um, I'm telling you, Jen, you and Bree, I, I just am so deeply indebted to you guys for coming up with these ideas. I mean, they were just totally, completely brilliant. And while right now, other than, you know, my husband and Jen, your husband, it's been mostly us gals and, and that's okay. And it's okay if guys want to come join us. I hope and wish they would. Um, but, you know, it's it's great having kind of like this little, you know, kind of gal pal night and you know we just get to spend time hanging out with one another encouraging one another having fun crocheting you know I mean where else can you do that and so okay grandma Anna she said she'll send me a picture with her address um I have a more muted color palette um what do you oh what you talking about for your long wire blanket grandma grandma Anna and Jen says, I still have to send you pics. Um, yeah, I got I got an updated. And y'all, that's the one thing I'm still really behind on right now is my emails. And I'm really hoping tonight after hubby goes to bed, which is very soon if he's not already. Um, and tomorrow while he's at work before our date um, that um, I'm going to get caught up in all that. But I got to browse through some of them. And part of the reason I'm behind is I used to could look at them at work, but work updated their computers. And I have to have Firefox to open my email. And we're not allowed to download anything. And it would have to be re-downloaded. And even though it was originally on there, yeah, it's not going to get downloaded on my login screen. So therefore, I can do it on my phone, but I try to um, watch using you know, some of my minutes, because sometimes I can log on to the hospital. But here lately, the hospital email, uh, excuse me, internet has been having issues with their server. Um, in fact, uh, 
Thursday morning, the entire hospital system went down. We had no computers, no phone. We had electronic locks that we couldn't get into those various departments and rooms. Thank God none of them were entrances to patient rooms, but it was awful. And my partner and I literally had to manually check people in. All the little labels that get printed, the wristband, we had to manually write their V number. Um, we had to write, you know, their name, their birthday, all that stuff. And on those labels, we had to sit there and write all that information by hand. And usually we have to provide, you know, like 36 labels. It was a nightmare for each person. It was awful. Um, Deborah says buffering. Uh oh. Grandma Anna says, wow. Jen says, Deborah, ask your library. Deborah says, I will. I missed something. Um, oh, I missed a bunch. Grandma says, I love gal night. Me too. Deborah says, can I get called the midwife on DVD or TV or Netflix? I'm hoping it's on Netflix. I think I found it on Netflix. Because if not, then I'll definitely have to go to the library myself. But I'm pretty sure I found it on Netflix. Grandma Anna says, yes, on my Longmire blanket. Okay. That's what I thought you were talking about. But I still thought your color palette is beautiful. I've seen your pictures. I'm trying to think. I know I've seen some of Jan's. I know I've seen some of Janice's. I know that Deborah... I think you sent me some. Grandma Anna, have you sent me some of yours? That is one thing I have asked my, um, my family doctor about. All these people around me are going through menopause. And I'm like, I'm 51 and I'm not complaining if I don't. But they're like, hot flashing everywhere and all this memory's bad. But that was the one thing I told her is, is my memory coming and going because of old age, which I don't consider myself old and, or is it the diabetes and the medicine I'm on? But sometimes I don't remember things. Thank God my husband has a photographic memory because he keeps me. So if I, if you show me something, that's why I created this book so that, I can remember things that I should remember that maybe I don't. And you guys are my age, so I, I don't have to make any excuses. You, you know what I'm talking about. Grandma Anna says, just once in the beginning. Oh, it's on Netflix. It was a nightmare, Grandma Anna, but we got through it. We pulled together. And um, I haven't even told my husband this, but I might have. I got some really great, big, huge recognition, which... I don't need and I don't deserve. I'm the one who figured out how to do the downtime stuff because we didn't have computers and we didn't have phones and we didn't have printers. And um, when my boss came in, I was able to give her and show her how the procedure needed to be done and pass that off to her. And then she was able to make things straight and right for the nurses in the ER, the administration, the um, outpatient, the surgery people, and all the way over at the wellness center. And because of what I gave her, the hospital was able to run without all that stuff from 4.30 Thursday morning until 10 o'clock Friday night. That was a huge gap without having that stuff. And so, um, yeah, they're wanting to recognize me. And you guys, I'm going to be honest. That's my job. All I did was my job. So, and I, I get, I get where they're coming from. If I had not put my thinking cap on, it would have been a huge hot mess. And I understand that. But at the end of the day, you hired me to keep the ER running as far as registration goes. And if what experience or knowledge I had was able to benefit the other departments, 
then that's just teamwork, right? So I don't know that it warrants special recognition. So that's just how I feel. Um, so back to Deborah. Um, she does not have TV or Netflix. Okay. So yeah, Deborah, I with Jen. Try your library. And if that doesn't work, let me know. And I'm going to make myself a note. Let me actually grab a post-it note that I can stick on my computer. Um, check with your library. I'm going to I'm gonna go on Amazon or something like that. My husband's great when it comes to stuff like that. It might be tomorrow night after our date. But, um, and if not Sunday, if you can try and, well, your library is probably closed until, it might be open tomorrow for a little bit, if you get a chance to call in the morning. But if not, reach out to me. I'm going to go on and see if I can find it to, like, purchase it. And if it's not, like, astronomically a lot, then what I could do is I could purchase it, and then I can put in your address and just have them mail it straight to you. So, let me know. Because we definitely, definitely want you to be a part of this with us. So, all right. Um, let's see. Uh-oh. Uh, okay, so that's Grandma Anna, you were telling me just once in the beginning. Okay. Deborah doesn't have Netflix. Grandma Anna says, Gratch, Cynthia. And then Deborah says, my diabetes does that sometimes with memory. Good. Then I don't feel so bad because I don't really think it's about my age. I, I know I'm 51, but you guys, I don't feel 51. Like I feel younger than that. And I know I've got a little bit of health stuff going on starting, but I still feel very energetic. And I mean, I can remember when I thought 50 was old, but 50 does not feel old. Now my husband, I laugh at him. I'm 51. He just turned 50. His birthday is July 1st. Sorry. <laughs> I thought something just touched me, but there's nothing there. I don't know what that was. That was weird. Felt like a hand on my leg. Sorry. Anyway, his birthday is July 1st and mine's July 17th. So for literally, you know, that short time frame, we're the same age. And then after that, I'm older than him. And he came in the other day and he says, you know what? I've told my 50 year old self that it's 30. So I said, yeah, let me know how that works for you. But anyway, um, so I'm glad, I'm glad you shared that with me, Deborah. It makes me feel a lot better. Um, Jen says, good job, Roseanne waved and loved. Grandma Anna says, but you went above and beyond in the bad situation. But yeah, Maybe. Jen says, don't rob the hospital of a blessing you gave them. See, that's why I love you guys, because you, you're right. But I did just feel like I was just doing my job and being a team player. Um, Deborah says, could be age for me, too. I'm 69. Could be. Um, Grandma says, that should work. DVDs of Call the Midwife are on the Amazon and should be in library. So, yeah, especially since they're going to make a movie out of it, I would I would think that the libraries would have it. But just let me know if they don't and we'll we'll make sure that you're a part of this. So um, one way or the other. Um, Deborah says Monday it's open again. OK, well, if you can just call and check with them. Um, it's still going to be a while because we have six seasons of Longmire. So, and we're only doing two shows a week, which is enough. I, I, I know I couldn't do any more. Um, and I know y'all can't either because like all of us were crunching to get it done today. So, um, so we've got a while, but just knowing, I mean, we've got time 
But um, anyway, Grandma Anna says an angel. Roseanne says Holy Spirit might be. Yeah. And Deborah says library, I mean, is open Monday to Thursday. Oh, I, I, I did know that's what you were talking about, Deborah. Oh, thank you, Jen. She says that I'm humble. Yeah. Might have been an angel touching me on the leg. But so, all right. Well, anything else, ladies? I do hope that y'all enjoy Monday's episode. Like I said, it's long, so take your time. And I am working on, I have, so I've got Mondays completed. I've got the next Monday completed. And I'm working on the next Monday currently. And it as well is very simple. So, like I said, this Monday segment is quite lengthy and time consuming. Not necessarily hard, but time consuming. You are working with two strands of yarn, two different colors. You're carrying yarn within yarn, but that's why the video is so long because I'm literally doing it step by step. So the steps are not going to be hard. The carrying the yarn is not going to be hard. And if you've not done that, give yourself time to learn how to do that. It's really very simple. And you'll, I'll be honest, when someone showed me how to do that, that's when I really began growing in my crochet because I wasn't afraid to try new things and create picture patterns. And if I had known what I knew then, I would have probably done my son's Southwestern hoodie differently, but I'm gl kind of glad I did it because I do love the way I did his hoodie. But even if you don't get it all done this week, that's what I'm saying. Don't let it overwhelm you because it is such a time consuming segment because the next week and the next week are so simple that even if you're not doing those until that following week, you're going to get it done like that and you're going to be caught back up. So I hope that's helpful. I hope you have fun with it though. Okay. Jen says, this time of year, that's a freaky angel. I'm just saying, oh, well, I don't need no freaky angels. <laughs> um, Grandma Anna says, I'm excited for Monday's video. I hope so. I really, it's killing me not to show y'all. Like it, it turned out so great. Again, if you didn't hear this part, I had never done it before. So I was a little nervous. But I knew that, you know, if I couldn't do it, then you wouldn't have known about it because then y'all wouldn't be doing it. But I'm so glad I tried it. I'm so glad I jumped in there. I'm so glad I took the time to show y'all. And oh my gosh, when you're done and you hold your blanket back and you look at it, I mean, it's just, it's going to keep screaming to me because I'm taking to heart and researching, you know, like what we could put in this blanket that screams Longmire, that screams, you know, Western, you know, Wyoming, Indian, you know, I'm really putting thought into it. I'm not just throwing a segment here and there. Like I'm really thinking about it. And when you pull that blanket back, like it has that Western kind of Native American you know, Wyoming, Longmire feel. And I hope y'all feel the same way. So um, Deborah says, yes, we do have time. Thank you, Cynthia. I appreciate all you do. Thank you, Deborah. Grandma Anna says, I'm learning so much from this blanket. That makes my heart truly smile. Like, again, I'm having fun with it. And if I'm having fun, I do want you to have fun. And like Sylvia, God bless her. You know, she's trying so hard to do this blanket and she can't see. And I've told her, just call me. I mean, if I have to try and verbally walk you through something, I will. But she's trying it, y'all. And she's way behind. Um, there's circumstances. She started it. Um, an incident happened. She, I'm going to say she had to restart it. And um, it's a very slow process for her. And think about us. We can see what we're doing. 
you know, I, I just can't imagine her feeling her way through what we're doing, but she's doing it. She's trying. And that, that, oh, I'm going to get emotional. That's just huge. That's just as friends supporting each other. That's us helping each other grow, helping us to um, be positive about ourselves. And I'm telling you, I'm just so blessed by you guys. You just are truly a gift, a gift that I didn't ask for. I didn't expect. I maybe don't even deserve, but, um, and then you're having fun at something I'm creating. And so it does mean a lot to me to really put time and thought into what we're doing. So anyway, sorry. Jen says, I'm excited that other podcasters are wanting to do this at a later time. I know, right? And, um, and yeah, um, your ideas, you and Bree, you really started something. And I, I do. I, I hope other podcasters will jump on this um, and, and do the same thing. I know I wouldn't be able to join a, a bunch of them because, you know, time is hard. Um, but I would love to be on that other side and sit back and crochet and answer questions, you know, to somebody else's, you know, movie podcast night. So that would be fun. But, uh, you know, who knows if and when the time comes um, and I'm, I'm, I'm able to leave the hospital and one day do this as just my only job, then, you know, Maybe we'll do our series two nights a week. You know, if y'all schedule, you know, if, if everybody schedule out, if not, I am perfect. Friday nights are just my favorite day now. So, all right. Whew. Deborah says, oh, but you do deserve. Well, thank you. Uh, you just guys are so amazing. And um, I, I don't, I haven't seen her on here for this segment. She was on my live earlier, but um I had a young lady that um, has, you know, been texting me and we actually spoke on the phone last night and had um, an opportunity to get to know each other. And it, it is, it's, it's a blessing getting to know y'all. And um, I'm getting so much more out of this podcast than I ever, ever imagined. Like I thought I was just going to go on here and, you know, share my love of passion and passion for crocheting and, you know, yeah never in my wildest dreams did I have any idea how so much more this would be. And I thought that I would just be giving and giving. And yet I feel like you guys have given me way more than I've given you. And, and my husband loves it. He loves just seeing my happiness, you know, um, not that I wasn't a happy person before, but he, I mean, he was it. Like all my crochet conversations were with him and he's not a crocheter, but he's passionate about what I'm passionate about. And here he is right here telling us he loves us. He's going to bed. I'll come in and say good night in a minute and um, talking about you. And so he's happy that I'm happy because I have people who do crochet and therefore if I have an idea, I can bounce it off of you guys. And with your experience and your knowledge, you know, and your trials and errors, you can say, yeah, that's not going to work. Or yeah. How about like Jen, the butterfly on, um, sorry, I had a little notification pop up. The idea of putting the butterfly on that scarf, who would have imagined? Um, and I don't know if you got to see it last week, but um, I finished that scarf and it's in the living room because that's something else I'm working on tonight. I created a butterfly out of that same material to put on there and it um, was too camouflaged. So right now I have um, some of this, Bernat yarn that's got the little crinkly cut to it. Can you see that? Oh yeah, you can see that. 
So I've got the one little butterfly that's actually made out of the same yarn as the scarf. I'm going to make a slightly bigger one out of this and put that one in the center of it and then put it on the scarf. I was going to do several kind of scraggled, but in the end, I'm just going to do this bigger one and that one. So it just sits on the one side. And that way, if I want to wrap it around, I can do that. And then it's coming out over the wrap. And there's that butterfly sitting right there. I would have never thought of that. And well, unfortunately, it's going to make me selfish because that's now another scarf I'm going to keep for myself and not give away. But but thank you. And that's what it's about. And that's why he's so happy for me, because you guys are giving so much more to me than I feel like I'm giving to you. And 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 we're just bouncing off of each other. So anyway, let's see what you're saying real quick. Um, Night, Todd. Oh, they said I did not see it. OK. Well, I'll be showing it again next Friday and I'll make sure I bring it onto the long or the movie night just in case you're not able to come to conversations, um, which I'm glad you were there tonight and show you because I'll have the butterfly on it. I may just wear it. Um, you said pretty. Jen says nice. Jen says, I didn't like the wall hanger, but love the butterflies. I know, right? And Deborah says, good standout. It, it is. It is. And Jen says, wonderful. Thanks. No, thank you. So anyway, but, uh, yep. So I have the, um, I have a fall giveaway coming out ladies. Um, oh, I kept thinking there was another giveaway I was working on and I couldn't think of what it was, but it's for you guys. It's for this elite group. Um, for when we finish the Longmire. I'm so excited y'all. I have actual Longmire paraphernalia stuff to go in that giveaway. And um, I will include yarn for the um, midwife blanket. So this is what I do need from y'all. I know we still have time, but um, if you can either comment in this video tomorrow, later this week, or send me an email. But when we go to do the call the midwife blanket, tell me what colors you would like yours done in. You know, I've seen some where they're all one color. I've seen some where every little strip, you know, um, they changed colors out. Let me know what colors you're thinking about wanting to do yours in. If you're not certain what the call the midwife blanket is, Google it or Google it. YouTube it. And um, and I think there's two. You can either do it where it has like the dragonfly in it or the butterfly. And that's something else I want to ask y'all. Do you want to do the one that has the butterfly or the more the dragonfly in it? So let me know. Um, Jen says, let's see. Ah, uh, I've only seen it in one color. Jen says, hello, butterfly. I know, right? I, I was so tickled when I came across that. Um, yeah, I've seen them done in one color. And I've actually seen where every little section like that had the dragonfly or the butterfly. They were even done in multiple colors. But I just need to know. Um, I am trying to go ahead and figure out what I want to do mine in so that I can try to go ahead. I know we've got a lot of time left before it starts. Have you seen the older versions? That's actually what I currently have is an older version for us to do. Like it's in a, it's in a book and I'm trying to think the copyright on that book, I think was like 1963. It was in the early sixties, I think, or was it the forties? It's an older book. Like the book itself is in browns and yellows and oranges. <laughs> so it might be the seventies, but um, it's an older version that I currently have, but I've seen it with butterflies recently, but, um, but I'm thinking about trying to figure out what colors I want to do mine in if I want a multiple colors or if I want it one color and go ahead and start mine so I can start getting the videos done and recorded. So that way I have an idea of exactly how much yarn will be needed. So when I get that yarn for the giveaway, I'm making sure that you have 
exactly what you need because I'm real big about trying to keep the yarn from the lot that it came. You know what I'm saying? Like I like making sure I have enough yarn for the project so that the lot dye is, is similar. So, um, two weight or three weight yarn. I'm definitely looking at a three weight yarn for mine. And I'm honestly trying to decide Well, I think this is actually a four weight here, but um, I've been even thinking about doing something with mine, like a variegated like this, or um, I'm fixing to tell on myself. Oh, can y'all see it? Okay, no, you can't. Woo! I just realized that my fall giveaway is sitting right up there. Um. Yeah, you can't see it, but, um, and now I can't show you. I can't even tilt the camera because then you'll see the fall giveaway because I have to use my ladder to get all the way up there um, or my husband. <laughs> but I have a, I have a basket up here and it's got a lot of those big comfy cotton three weight yarns in it. Um, well, I did a shawl and I've given it away. I've got my table runner that I made over there that my fishes are under, but um, I thought I had some down here, but that's what I was thinking about using so that it was variegated. I really thought I had some of that still down here, but that's the thing. Whoever wins, I want you to have it in something that you're going to use. Oh, I do, but they're they're back here behind this parfait, and I'm not I'm not tall enough to get it out. But I'll show you something else that I also thought about doing mine in, but it's a four weight. I'm pretty sure this is a four weight. Yeah, it's a four weight, but this feels like butter. That's what they call it. Uh, let's see. Right there. You see that? I've even thought about making mine in this. Because even though it's a four weight, it's not it's not really very thick. So you think so, Jen? Let's see. Um Grandma Anna says, please check email to make sure I sent it correctly. I will. Um, Jen says it's an older pattern. People are making it out to be new. You're right. It is an older pattern. Um, I'm trying to say, I do think the book mine is in is a seventies or sixties copyright, but I think that blanket, you know, not like I don't have enough to do, but I might Google and see if I can find out when it came out. Because you're right, Jen, it, it's, it's, it is an old pattern and people are making it out that it is new and it's not, it, it is an old pattern. Now I had not heard about the movie, but when I saw the blanket, I realized that's how I knew I had it in that older book. Um, that it, it had been around for a while. Grandma Anna says, I like the butterflies. Um, what I'll try to do is I will try and get a picture on my phone and um, I'll have it available to show y'all next week what it looks like with the butterflies in it. Okay. So let me write a note to myself so I don't forget. All right, and let's see. Jen says you might lose the pattern in the multicolors. Um, the butterfly one is the one I saw in the multiple colors. So that's what made me think about more than one color, if that was something that y'all might be interested in. Um, pastel baby rainbow colors, sort of traditionalist. Yeah, Deborah. 
And oh, I know, Deborah, I just recently have found this it feels like butter. And I have this light gray. I actually got these colors to make a blanket for my grandbaby. This was before I knew um, if we were having a boy or girl. And you know what? I just realized I forgot on conversations to tell y'all my good news. You guys want to hear something? My daughter-in-law, my son, told me what they finally decided to name my granddaughter. Y'all will be the first to know. You ready? They are naming her Violet. Remember, they were going back and forth between um, Coraline, Violet, or Ivy. And they've decided to name her Violet Wolf Owens. And they're going to spell Wolf, W-O-L-F-E. So Violet is her name. So now I know I can start creating stuff with Violet in it. So anyway, but so I got this yarn. It was on sale at Michael's. And I got these three colors. Let me see if y'all can see these or not. Violet is beautiful. I'm in love with it. Although I thought all three names were really pretty, but um, I don't know. Sometimes the lighting in here at nighttime, which tends to be when I record a lot because I sleep during the day because of my crazy work schedule, it doesn't show up very well. Oh, yeah, you can kind of see those. It's a dark gray, kind of like a light minty kind of green. And then this is more like a light gray. So dark gray, light gray, and like a a minty green and they call them ice glaze. So it's kind of like a bluish minty green that kind of shows up really good right there. And then this dark gray is just called charcoal. And this one's called pale gray. And so I got those before I knew if we were having a boy or girl because I felt like any of those colors could go for boy or girl. And then if it was a girl, I could always crochet some type of, you know, pale pink or yellow or lavender or mint green uh, applique and put it on the blanket, you know. Um, and then same thing with a little boy if I wanted. But, but anyway, for me, I've been thinking about either the combination of or this um, ice glaze doing my call the midwife blanket in. That's what I've been thinking about. If I don't do one of those cotton three weight cakes. But when I think about those cotton three weight cakes, Jen, I agree with you. I do think the variegated would kind of lose the, um, the picturesque part of it, but the classiness of it, you know, I, I do think you're right. Jen says, cool. Grandma Anna says, name. Deborah says, pretty colors. Jen says, will you have different sizes for us if we want to make a larger than you size? Yeah, because actually that's the thing about that call the midwife. From what I've looked at reading that pattern, it's kind of repetitive. So you can definitely go bigger or smaller. Um, I haven't decided how big I'm making mine. I thought about doing mine the size of a baby blanket. But that's the thing. My granddaughter, she has other people that crochet. I'm the only one that's like, it's a life thing. Them, it's definitely a, a kind of casual hobby. But she has a lot of people that are making her things. So like I've talked to my son and his, um, I call her my daughter. I've talked to my son and daughter about um, doing more things like baby sweaters, hats, booties, bibs, you know, things like that, that might have everyday wear. I'm making her bath mitts and, and baby washcloths. And I'm currently... Um, I haven't touched it lately, just like my Elvis blanket, which I'm missing doing. I'm trying to create and design a hooded baby towel um, that could also become like a hooded blanket. 
but um, I'm trying to do stuff like that. But so I've been thinking about with the call, the midwife blanket, it will go to my granddaughter. I've thought about doing it a little bit bigger because she'll have all these baby blankets, but then I can give her a blanket as she gets a little bit bigger that she can actually have to maybe even put on her bed. So Jen says striping might be good. Jen says years and years ago, I bought a bunch of red heart with love in blue, black, and gray. I can use it's a four weight though. Okay. Well, regardless if it's three weight or four weight, I mean, the pattern should still flow. It just, you know, depending on, you know, the hook you choose to use. And that's the thing, you know, we'll talk about all that when it comes time. Um, I mean, for me, if, if I do use this, I probably will use a J six millimeter hook. If I use a three weight, I might probably use um, more of the H hook, you know, but um, that'll also change the size. So that's something I guess y'all can start thinking about since we know we're going to do the call the midwife. We know that we're going to do that as a blanket. Um, what size you want to do now. I have not looked to see how many seasons call the midwife has. Does anybody know right off? I know, Jen. She says, I'm getting all excited and it's months away. LOL. Right? Um, yeah. Uh, does anyone know by any chance how many seasons Call the Midwife has? And the reason I'm asking is because um, the other day I also um, came across a pattern Jen says, I don't know. Um, I'll try to look into that too. And I'll answer that for us next week. Um, I saw a shawl that had the same butterfly type pattern. And um, if I play around with it, I know how to make shawls. Um, I've already designed two of my own shawls. And... Um, if I can incorporate the call the midwife butterfly stitch into that shawl, if we finish our blanket and because we'll start that call the midwife as we start, like, you know, we started Longmire well after we were doing it. Um, we might make a shawl as well for during our call the midwife. So, We'll see. But anyway, um, Deborah says gauge isn't absolute on blankets. It's not. It's it, it really isn't. And again, it you know, the thing about the blankets, I mean, any blanket you do. Grandma Anna says, whew, I think I sent it correctly now. Bless your heart. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had him take my phone out so it wouldn't be beeping through us. And so all I have is my laptop and I'm scared to death to try anything while I'm on a live that I would lose y'all. So I will check into that. Um, I'm easy going. You all decide and I will follow. Oh, you're so sweet, Grandma Anna. Grandma Anna, if for some reason I did not get your email, what I'll do is when this uploads um, and after I've checked it, I will leave you a comment saying um, I got your email or it did not come through or something. So I will communicate that to you. Um, if not, sometimes I leave messages for people under the discussion part of their YouTube, but I don't know if they ever get it. So I can try that too. That's why I said I wasn't going to start reaching out. I was going to quit reaching out trying to collect my winners from the giveaways because um, I don't know if they're getting that or not. And then everybody sees all that stuff too. But anyway, um, but someone made a comment to me. If they're going to sign up for a giveaway, they need to come back and see if they won. And that's true. So um, let's see. 
Grandma Anna says, sounds good. Jen says there's 78 episodes. Wow. So we definitely um, have some time there that if we start, you know, um, right at the get go, we could have time to do the blanket and who knows, maybe do a call the midwife shawl. So sounds like fun to me. If not, then maybe in the next movie series, we can incorporate our project as a shawl. But, but that is the thing. I don't necessarily, unless y'all want to, always do blankets. You know, we might could create a table runner or, you know, other things. A table runner placemats that go with the theme somehow of the show we're watching. But uh, anyway, yes, Jen, like a prayer shawl. Um, let's see. Um, Jen says in CTM. CTM. Help me out, Jen. CTM in C oh oh in Call the Midwife. Yes. So there's 78 episodes in Call the Midwife. That's a pretty good bit of episodes. Um, just at a glance, and I should have been able to do this in my head, but um uh yeah, that's um two episodes a week. That's uh 39 weeks. <laughs> Uh, so basically, uh, if that's the case, um, you're talking about almost 10 months. No. Well, yeah. If you do an average of four weeks a month. That's nine, almost nine and a half months that we'd be on Call the Midwife. So we'll definitely have time to do. Grandma Anna says, I'd love to do more than blankets like a shawl too. Me too. Um, Jen says, then give it to senior citizen or veteran, huh? Oh yeah, like the prayer shawl. I know that would be awesome. Oh my gosh. See, we're growing. We're having fun with gals, pals watching movies, creating stuff, and spreading the joy. Love you, ladies. Where have y'all been all my life? That's the question I want to know. But it doesn't matter because you're here now, and I love it. Um, Grandma Anna says, I want to make baby blankets for Pregnancy Aid Center. That is awesome. Deborah, you're right. Almost nine months, so... We will have plenty of time and um, yeah, somewhere like I, I thought it'd be great too. like, like I was saying, we have so many different ideas. We can create, you know, a, a bag. We can create rugs, a table runner with placemats and coasters. I'm so excited. You guys, I'm going to be honest. I might just quit doing tutorials and just do movie nights. And no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, I know there is a lot. Yeah, Jen, there's 63 episodes in Longmire. And I'm trying to find out. I'm trying to make sure on Netflix, I only see six seasons of Longmire. So I'm, and I've heard from what I've heard, the last season they did was the last season of Longmire. So I'm hoping that Netflix has, <coughs> excuse me, all the episodes. Um, Grandma Anna says, God put us together now, his time, not ours. Amen. That is so, so true. That is so true. Um, I don't, I don't think we would have had this moment, you know, like I don't think any time before now, it, it just wouldn't have happened. So you're right. You're so right. God's timing and it's always perfect. Um, but either way, it, it's a blessing that we have it now. So Jen says bags. Yes. Jen says no. Oh, no, don't quit. Uh, Jen says, yes, that's all Deborah. Oh, that's good. So just a six season. Well, not good, but you know what I mean? Uh, Deborah says, have a baby. 
Um, Jen Rees ended in 2018. Jen says, a Call the Midwife coaster set. Ooh, that would be good. Um, Deborah says, six seasons only in, Wet in Longmire. Okay, okay. Oh my gosh, y'all. I'm so excited. I'm so excited about what's to come. I'm excited about now. I'm, I'm excited to see how the Longmire blanket pans out. But I am so excited about Call the Midwife. And we don't even know what's coming after that. But, I mean, this is going to get us through the next year. But, oh, my gosh. This is so amazing. Um, so, so, yes. So, that's something I need you to start thinking about. Because I am going to have a Longmire giveaway. And, um, sorry, I didn't realize I had sleepies on my eyes. thought I washed my face better than that when I got up. But I do have the Longmire paraphernalia and I do want to provide the yarn. I will let y'all, you know, get your own hook or whatever because everybody has their favorites. Um, I still encourage you to tell your friends if they haven't to subscribe because I do want to give away a Lether Co. hook when I reach my thousand subscribers. I have challenged if I get there by Christmas, I will give away two. Um, I am currently for the first time in a year minus one other time on the um, sorry, my eye is bothering me on the stay home blanket, stay home, stay crafty yarn blanket that I'm working on. They sent me um, a flat hook in that crochet society box. And I've been using that on that blanket. But other than that, I've used those Lether co hooks for the last year. But on the pocket shawl, I did not have a Lether Co. hook in a size K. And that's the hook that I'm using. So I'm actually using one of these boy hooks. The B-O-Y-E. I think that's how you, yeah. Yeah, boy. My fish just jumped. <laughs> That was weird. Sorry. Um, and it's weird. It's, it's, it's been awkward because I'm so used to those ergonomic hooks now that I do have to stop a lot more often with that one um, just because it's not the ergonomic design. And my, my fingers tend to um, hurt and tingle. Anyway. Okay, let's see here. Write this stuff down. I won't remember tomorrow. I know, Jen. I have been. Girl, every time I get up from my Friday nights, I have crazy notes everywhere. Look at this. And then I have this. And then I have names. <laughs> so I have to have notebooks to stay organized. Um, that's just part of me anyway. But I am writing it down. Um, let's see. Grandma Anna says, I did send a picture of my blanket. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited. Um, that will help keep me awake because I'm, I'm, I'm up for the haul. I told my husband I was honestly going to try. Probably won't happen, but I'm actually going to try to stay up tonight. Um, and instead of going in the, to bed in the morning, I'm going to try to keep myself going with coffee, protein shakes, and crocheting and videos and try to stay up so that when he goes to sleep tomorrow night, I can go to sleep and be up on his schedule Sunday so we can actually have tomorrow night and Sunday together. And um, then Sunday, I'll have to stay up so that I'm ready to go back to work Monday night. But anyway, Deborah DeWitt says, spoiler alert, sixth season is a tearjerker. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm glad. Thank you. Um, and it wasn't too much of a spoiler alert. So I appreciate that too. <sighs> so we've got a couple seasons to prepare ourselves. So Grandma Anna says, I have an aluminum boy hook. Um, I have a bunch of hooks that when I first started and they are the aluminum boy hooks. And I think I have some Susan Bates. And honestly, and I have some that are brand new that I've never even used um, that I've thought about using in some of my giveaways and stuff. 
because if I'm not using stuff, I'd rather give it to someone who might use it. So if there's any particular hook in that line that you need or you're looking for, let me know. Um, Jen says, freaky angel again. I know, right? I don't know what's going on in here. I can tell you this much. If it's the devil trying to come play on my playground, he's not invited. <laughs> um, let's see. Grandma Anna says, our fish died, so we clean take and got four mice. They are hysterical. <sighs> I'll let you have that. Although, I will tell you that when I was a missionary in Savannah, Georgia, um, there was a guy that I was dating. I actually, we, we started dating and I went to take his place while he went to spend two years in the Philippines as a missionary. And um, he had bought Siberian dwarf hamsters. And um, you can ask my husband I am not a mouse person at all. Like just the long spirally tails, the beady eyes. Yeah, they just get to me. But the Siberian dwarf hamsters are really gray in color. Most of them, some of them have a light brown, white color to them, have very short stubby tails. And they didn't have quite those beady piercing eyes. So they were kind of adorable. And um, he had um, one named Agape. And um, I took care of Agape. And um, when he came back from the Philippines, he took Agape back. And unfortunately, you know, through life and changes and choices and whatnot, you know, we ended up just becoming friends. But so he had Agape. Well, when the boys were younger, I got them Siberia dwarf hamsters. And um, it was all great until I ended up being the one cleaning the tanks and or the cages and whatnot. And I'm just not a rodent type person. And it, they're fun to watch. But yeah, I'm, mm. so we, we had to find a nice home for them. Um, most of mine are Susan Bates. I'm too cheap to buy the good ones. Frugal, maybe, Jen says. Grandma Anna says, my daughter used to have a rat. Sir Templeton Q. Ratsworth. I love that name. Oh my gosh, that's so great. Jen says, I did find some at a Dollar Tree store a couple hours away from me, and I'm enjoying them. Maybe I just don't know quality. Grandma Anna, laugh at little Jen. No, I'm with you. And there's nothing wrong with those hooks. And and I do, and I love even, you know, and all the ones I had in the beginning were the aluminum. And then I found these at Walmart. I think that's where I found them. And then I got a couple set. I got a free set um, with a kit that I ordered and... I got another free set with Happily Hooked when I got their bag or whatever. Um, but then when I started getting Ashley uh, Ashley Lether's Lether Co. boxes, um, that's when I got introduced to the wooden ergonomics. And I fell in love with them. And um, even though I'm no longer getting her boxes, because I, I did want to start trying other boxes, but I'm going to be honest that money that I was using for that box is kind of what I'm using right now to purchase my giveaway stuff and try to help with shipping costs because oftentimes shipping is a lot more than the gift itself. So um, like, I don't even want to say, cause I, I don't even want the people that I've sent stuff to recently to even know, but like I was shocked at some of the costs that it, it cost me to send things. And um, I've even tried doing things um, UPS versus uh, the mail. And um, it's hard to see which one's really, you know, cheaper, to be honest. So I just right now go with convenience. The, the nearest UPS store for me is 25 to 30 minutes away. And my post office is like three minutes down the road. So anyway, um, so that's the only reason I use that those nicer hooks, I was trying to see if I could find one, but that's the only reason. But now I did recently, as you know, I, I've ordered two outside of kits. One, I didn't get what I ordered. And then the second one, the Halloween hook, I got the Halloween hook and I love it. Oh my gosh. But, um, yeah, that's the only reason. Otherwise I'm, I'm content. I'm content with the hooks I have. So, 
but I don't need all these hooks. That's the thing. So I'm, I'm up for sharing. Grandma Anna says, laugh out loud, Jen, about your um, Dollar Tree. And, you know, I've heard about that. Well, I've heard the dollar store, you know, sells yarn. So that's something else I want to go look at. And um, I didn't know the Dollar Tree did, too. Or that might be the same store. Dollar Tree, dollar store. Might be the same store. Everything's a dollar. So I have to go check that out. But no. Uh, we're not the Joneses. So, Jen says, I'm starting to look at yarn inspirations hooks at Hobby Lobby, I think. Jen says, because I can use a coupon. Deborah says, good night, all. I'm for bedtime. See y'all later. Jen says, not all of them. Same store. Um, good night, Deborah. Thank you so much, love. Um, Deborah, let me know about the library. And also, um, ladies, don't forget to send me an email, just kind of giving me an idea of what colors um, yarn and maybe what yarn weight you're thinking about doing your midwife blanket in just so that when that time comes, I will not only have an idea if you're the winner, but also I'll already have your addresses so that I can quickly, you know, get this stuff purchased and get it to you and in your hands. So, um, but um, sweet dreams, Deborah. Good night, Deb. Night, Deborah. So there was something else I was going to ask y'all real quick. Um, oh, what the heck? I'm so sorry, y'all. I know I felt something. Okay, I think I found what it is. There's a moth in here. <laughs> Sorry. I found it. Oh my goodness, that scared me. I'm sorry. <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> so, surely that wasn't the moth earlier, though, because, whew, oh, my goodness. And he wasn't that big, so that wasn't what happened earlier. But that was a moth because he was only, like, so big. So, it must have come in when my husband let the dogs out to go potty for the last time tonight. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> that scared me. Um, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Grandma Anna, you all pick. Laugh out loud. Jen, I'm okay with what you choose, too. Jen says, did somebody say Freaky Angel? <laughs> right? <laughs> Laugh out loud, a moth. Um which I'm not scared of moths, but it just scared me because I felt something tickling my leg. And I was like, what in the world? And I looked down and there's a moth on my foot. Um, Deborah says, yes, I'll let you know. Hopefully the library will have it or be getting it. Deborah DeWitt says, has wings. A moth does have wings, a freaky angel. <laughs> um, well... I'm thinking about what y'all said, you know, um, you're okay with I choose to. Um, well, I just kind of want to know 
you know, because Jen, you talked about what size you wanted your blanket in. So it'd be nice to know kind of like what you're you're thinking about. Um, because obviously, you know, three weight yarn is gonna take a little bit more yarn, depending on the length or the width and all that that you want, the size you want. Even if I got y'all something like, you know, the um feels like butter, which is what I think I'm going to do mine in. Um, you know, I just have to have an idea so that, because like I said, I'm going to try before the Longmire is over with. And that's why I'm trying to get ahead a little bit with the Longmire so I can go ahead and start on this one so I can have an idea with the Longmire and us doing it in segments and as many colors as we had. I knew that if we pretty much have one color of each 12 colors of the dye, that we'd have been safe and we're going to obviously have yarn more than likely left over. Um, and if the colorway keeps going the way it is, we'll have less of some colors and more of others. So I'm kind of hoping them dye are going to shake it up a little bit. Um, but, um, but nonetheless, I'm pleased with the color way that is forming, but um, I just want to make sure that we have enough. So, and I would just, it would, it would hurt my feelings if I do a giveaway for it and the person doesn't have enough and then they can't find it or whatever, you know? So that's my only thing. I, and, and I want to plan and prepare ahead, but, um, I will tell you that, um, I am, I'm currently in the process of, de of designing something for the fall giveaway because we're going to do a tutorial, um, with, some of the goodies in that giveaway. And so that'll be something for the fall um, holidays. And then I'm currently working on a tutorial for something for Christmas. And I'm hoping to get a couple things out for Christmas, but um, this is my first year doing my podcast. So I, I didn't know what to expect when I got into this and started. And um, I have learned a lot and I will be better prepared for next year on um, holidays and seasons and things like that. So, um, and the fact that I, I am a planner and I like to do things ahead of time, um, hopefully that will make for an exciting 2021 on my channel. So, all right. Let's see. You're right, Jen. It doesn't all have to be the same. Um, yes, but I want a larger blanket, not for babies. Jen, I don't really, I know I've talked about maybe doing one for my granddaughter, but that's the thing. I can design one so I get the design. Well, I'm not going to be designing the midwife blanket. Like it's been around a long time. So I'm going to be using a pattern that's kind of like, out there that everybody's using. So, and it's not like I'm doing anything to sell or take credit. We're just doing it as a crochet along. So, um, for the tutorial, I don't know. I may do it as a bigger blanket because I would love to have the call the midwife blanket either on my bed or my guest bed. Um, and then as we're crocheting along together, I may do a baby, not a baby blanket, but a, a child size blanket for my granddaughter to have one day. So, or another grandbaby at that point. All right. Um, but just let me know, you know, um, grandma Anna says the butter yarn is fine. And I do love my Caron Simply Soft, um, yarn. I, that's one of my favorites too. Um, and that would be pretty. There's some really pretty colors, but that's the thing. I don't, I don't know what colors y'all, you know, would be interested in having or what your home decor or the person that you might be making it for. So I, I would just like some of your input or what I could do is I could even, um, write a check and send you money. That seems a little impersonal, but I could do that and you can pick out the yarn you want. So 
I think we're close enough now and a tight enough of a group that we can, um, you know, be open like that, you know? So that's, that's an option too, is I can send you the money to get your, your own yarn or whatever. It'd be fun buying for you, but you know, let me know. Oh, definitely. Um, I will tailor it to who wins. And that's why I'm saying if I can kind of get some ideas so that when that time comes, but we've got plenty of time yet. So, but anyway, in fact, that's one of the reasons the fall giveaway is up there, but also the Longmire stuff is up there. So it's out of the way and it is in no way for someone to knock over and break. So, um, Jen says, I think I've already got my yarn for it. Okay. Um, we'll figure out something. It'll be fine. Don't stress. Uh, you're going to do a great job. You can tailor it to who wins. Yes. If you get from Amazon, they can deliver to that person too. That is very true. And the young lady that I talked to last night, um, uh, I'm going to go check out the premier yarns. I've not bought any yarn like that online. And so I'm real excited to kind of go look and whatnot. And I think she said, if I did like $45 um, or more, it's free shipping. Um, so I have to check into that. True that grandma, Anna send gift cards rather than a check. But anyway, all right. Well, this has been so much fun. So, I'm hoping this week to have my pocket shawl debut on Wednesday and get the fall giveaway out there so we can get that going. Hopefully the tutorial for the fall giveaway will come out probably not this week, but the next week. And hopefully sometime soon I can pick that Elvis blanket up again. You guys, it is so pretty. I'm missing it so much. Um, I still got to work on my, daughter-in-law's hoodie before Christmas and that's just around the corner so a lot of stuff a lot of stuff not enough time so told my husband he's he and his brother play the lottery and, and you know his brother lives with us and I'm like one of y'all gotta win this girl's just gotta retire soon early <laughs> so anyway all right um or e-gift cards. I've not done that. Send gift cards rather than check. Um, that's something I'll have to get you guys to help educate me on more is the e-gift. And Jen says, I forgot about that. What'd you forget about? Grandma Anna says, laugh out loud. Yeah, would it be wrong to pray to God? That my husband wins the lottery so I can quit my job and crochet for the rest of my life. <laughs> oh, my Elvis blanket. I know. I know. Uh, my thing is now, you know, I, I originally was creating it for her for her birthday. But um, every February, we adopt widows from our church. And she's always one of the widows that I adopt. And so... Um, if I can get it done for her by Valentine's, that will be great. But worst case scenario, um, her birthday will be following in May. And unfortunately, she's in early onset of dementia. So it, it's it's not going to make a difference to her when she gets it. It's just I know that she's going to light up. And when I say like a child, I don't mean that in a, in a derogatory way or a demeaning kind of way. But um, she, it's, it's just going to make her day. She loves Elvis and it's going to make my day. I, I will be emotional, but I'm going to ask my friend if she thinks it'd be okay for me to videotape that when I give it to her so that I can share that experience with all of you. Um, Grandma Anna says, I'm going to make my call the midwife blanket for my niece. She loves the show. Oh, that's going to be special. Jen says, I want a giveaway from Charm Grammy Crochet, and she gave me an Amazon e-gift card. Oh, wow. I agree with you, Grandma Anna. God bless her. So, um, 
Yes, Jen says, cool, Grandma Anna, about making the blanket for your niece. So I wonder how the e-gift card works. Um, I'm not going to say who because I, I, I don't like... I don't like bringing in negativity and I don't think that it's even anything negative um, because the person that I reached out to is an extremely busy person. But um, um, I had a question about the YouTube stuff, you know, cause I'm still learning stuff and she never responded to me. And um, never answered my email. But I'm pretty sure I could probably reach out to Crystal with Bag of Day. And I know she would help me with that question I have. Um, it has to do with editing and whatnot. So, but, um, but yeah, I'm still learning so much. So if y'all know how that e-gift card works, that would be cool too. Because that would be really cool even for some of my giveaways to come up with. And that way people can use it how they want to. You just had to put a code in. So did you like receive an actual like a card, like, you know, like a gift card? And then you put a code in. How does how does that work? You got just a minute to tell me about that. Y'all, this yarn is so soft. <laughs> oh, no. So you just got a code. You went to maybe a website and put a code in. Oh, you got it through the email. And was it a link? And you clicked on the link? And then put the code in in the link, maybe? I can Google that. Yes, kind of. Okay. So an e-gift. All right, an e-gift card. I'll have to look into that. Well, ladies, tonight was fun. I have to go to bed. As I tell my cat, I'm ugly and need beauty sleep. Laugh out loud. Hugs and sweet dreams all. Yes, we're going to go. You do have to have an Amazon account. I do have an Amazon account. I don't use it often, but I do have one. Back from when I was a youth minister, I used to get all kinds of um, CDs and stuff for the kids, you know, to do as like, I did giveaways back then with them. Um, uh, so I do have one. So, okay. But I, the thing is, is making sure the person I'm doing it for has an Amazon account. So, yeah, the receiver does. They have to have one too. All right. Well, ladies, this has been so much fun. Um, thank you. I hope y'all have a wonderful week. Um, pray for me that I'm diligent and I get all this stuff out. Um, so that I can share it and Jen says, bye grandma, Anna. And, um, yeah. So have fun with the Longmire blanket. So I really cannot wait till next Friday to see what you think. So even if you don't get it done, then zoom it to the end so you can see it. No, don't do that. <laughs> Because I really want you to do it as a process. But anyway, I love you guys. Be joyful. Have a great week. Stay crafty in your own way and make your own joyful creations. Good night. <laughs>